Hello, everyone. I do believe that I am live. You may, you may swiftly notice my tone of voice in all of this. Good morning, Sobex. I don't, I don't think I usually see you in this chat. I want to, well, first of all, it's been quite a long time since I've had this, this locket thing on, on my stream. First, it was a joke. But now, I just want to comment how intensely grateful I am that I found an indie VTuber like Kirsha to be parasocial towards. Because somehow, despite her hilarious black comedy of a childhood, despite all the terrible influences that she's had throughout her her life, she has somehow managed to emerge from it as a vastly better person than every single one of the individuals that I'm about to talk about in this particular stream. I have been going down a rabbit hole the last few hours, and I'm kind of glad that people didn't vote for me to delay this stream, because if I had another couple of hours to ruminate on the stuff that I've been looking through, and the stuff that people have been saying to me about all of this, I think I would become very, very depressed very quickly. Luca is a nut, my friend, you bet you barely know you barely know the start of it. You barely know the start of it. I mean there is a there is a disclaimer. There is a disclaimer that you will see. I'm clipping this and sending it to our business email, you and probably several other people. But there is a disclaimer when I switch over to the document itself. Because a lot of people are going to be reading this document. And they're going to be taking sides. They're going to be saying, oh, it seems like Raziel was really abused. Oh, it seems like Luca was taken advantage of and groomed. But I, I hate everyone in this document. I hate all of them. And I don't use the word hate lightly. I hate how they act. I hate how they interact. I hate how they talk to each other. I hate their faces. I hate them personally. I hate them viscerally. I hate them passionately. I hate them sincerely. You know that that meme in 40k where it's like a space marine's armor isn't his ceramite, it's his contempt for the Xenos filth. I feel contempt right now. I feel the contempt of a space marine. I feel the contempt of a space marine towards heretics right now. That's the kind of contempt that I feel for the individuals that I'm about to discuss. And what's more, I feel the way I do towards them. Not even because they are necessarily all that bad people. I feel the way I do towards them because of where they are now of how many parts of the VTuber industry they have tentacles and tendrils and feelers in. Because on this channel before, I've discussed people like... I've discussed people like Marina, like Marina TV, like the, the, the disgusting autogynophile who abused a whole lot of people in VT Rainbow. And the thing is, Marina is still a terrible, dreadful person. But Marina is tiny. Is tiny compared to all these people. And what I have seen in the last couple of hours is something that goes much deeper. And I I reached out to one or two people. I'm not going to name names. Again, you you're feel you're you're perfectly free to say that I'm lying about any of this, because, you know. I, I can't necessarily provide receipts for any of this, but I reached out to a couple of people that I know who have a few more ties to the VTuber industry than I do. And, and I said to them, you know, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at these connections that these people have, and I'm like, how... How on earth do these people get anywhere? 
like how is it with behaviors like the kind of things that i see are these people popular how how is it and they just said to me about like all of them that i contacted said to me this is just how it is all of these people are like this is this new to you is this new to you and i'm like yeah it is new to me it's just depressing this is why I have stopped paying attention to corporations. This is why I've stopped paying attention to Hololive, to Niji Sanji, etc. Except when I do streams like this. And when I say paying attention, I mean in terms of like a casual viewership and so on. Because I used to watch a bit of Niji Sanji, I used to watch a bit of Hololive. All this kind of stuff. Now, I just... I just feel dirty when I think back and I think I used to enjoy this person's content or that person's content because I'm the kind of person who is, uh, I'm not sure if you've ever heard the saying, the fruit of the poisoned tree. And the fruit of the poisoned tree is a legal term and it applies to evidence that is submitted in court that is obtained via illegal methods. Let's say you're a policeman and you pull somebody over on, on the side of the road and you know it turns out that they've done something really nasty and but all you have but you suspect they've done something nasty and so you break you take them out of their car and you you force them to open up and you find stuff that that paints them from a different crime well most places you can't actually submit that evidence because you used an illegal method you didn't have a concrete suspicion to begin with and so you're not allowed to to put that evidence into court to get that person charged and the idea is that it's to prevent vigilantes, it's to prevent like miscarriages of justice and so on. It's to prevent people from acting outside of, uh, of the legal way of doing things. And I feel a version of the fruit of the poisoned tree when I watch like big VTubers now because I have become aware of the stuff they have done in the past and I feel in some way as if I'm contributing to... A very poisonous and toxic kind of industry at the higher levels, at the highest levels, that is. Not, the, not so much the lower levels, when I view these people. Because so many of them have what seems to be almost like mutual suicide pacts when it comes to content. <laughs> I mean, it's, it just got me in a very kind of introspective mindset, a very introspective attitude. And somebody on uh, Discord has just sent me some interesting information. Great, excellent. It's very useful. I apologize. I may be a tiny bit distracted because people are literally still sending me some stuff as as I speak. But I have a bunch of tabs open, as you may suspect. And we're going to get into those tabs, guys. We're going to get into those tabs. Luca got popular because Niji Sanji fans are insane. I mean, yep. Pretty much. They are. They absolutely are. So I apologize if this isn't really what you might call a, a a hysterical stream, a histrionic stream where I like yell and scream a lot and like play things up for the camera. This is this is kind of a an act of catharsis to me. It lets me get out of my system all of the bile and all of the vitriol that I feel regarding this situation. A lot of people in the VTubing industry have mental health issues. Absolutely, absolutely. But again, I, I highlight people like Kirsha because Kirsha is a person who has been exposed to deeply degenerate and disgusting things in her life. She has had to endure the worst kind of living situation. She grew up fatherless for a large part of her life. She was abused by a, a horrific mother. She was... She went through terrible things, and then afterwards she went through a series of dreadful relationships, of abusive, toxic relationships. And she has every reason, every justification for just... <coughs> Thank you very much for subscribing, by the way. Oh, hello, Curry. Hello, Curry. Nice to see you join. But yeah, she has every reason to, to, to be worse than she is, and yet every day, Kirsha wakes up, and Kirsha says, I'm not going to be... A terrible person. I'm going to limit my degeneracy. To a degree, anyway. I'm going to try and encourage other people to be better people. I'm going to try and be an example for people. 
And that's what I have so much intense respect and admiration for. And I grow more respectful of that the more I investigate people that have had far better lives than her and have chosen the, the path of the kind of thing that we're going through right now. So I just want to get that off my chest. You know, that's, that's Foxu Appreciation 101. But we're going to start going through this, this wonderful, lovely document. Because there are many things in it that make me go, hmm. That really make me go, hmm. Because there is so much slant to this. There's so much that I take issue with, and there's so much that I feel. Again, I have several other tabs. that We will get to the tabs in it, but there is so much whitewashing going on here. And we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to it. So let's get into this. Ugh, I apologize. I am slumping terribly in my seat. I really must pay more attention to my posture. <laughs> I'm concerned Luca is Slut Puppy's Oshi isn't he? I have no idea, I'm afraid. Ah, <sighs> right. Allow me to slip on studio mode, make sure everything's working. Yes. Now, I have done something very nice for all of you. I'm not going to do something very nice now, and I'm going to belch one second. Oh, got that out of the way. I have, because uh, I was watching, like, Rima, uh, Rima Everstar's uh, stream last night for a bit. I had to go to bed, so I couldn't watch all of it. But, I mean, people were complaining that uh, she had light mode on, and I, I, I like light mode. Like, I, light mode is my preference, okay? I'm that kind of person. I'm a very weird person, all right? However, because I saw people complaining about light mode in her chat, I have been very nice, and I have done this. So I have got this document. I've specifically installed an extension so that we will be able to view this document in dark mode. <laughs> I really hope that you appreciate this. So that now nobody can say in my chat, I hate light mode, I'm not watching this stream because I have an irrational hatred of additional photons reaching my eyeballs. <laughs> And I have pre-read, I don't normally pre-read these documents, but I did, and I'm very, very glad that I did, because it gave me far more ammunition, you might say, than I otherwise would have. So we're going to go through this now. <sighs> Why does this document exist? More information has come out with another individual in the know, confessing to me that Luca Kaneshiro has allegedly harassed others out inside of Niji Sanji. I notice that as far as I'm aware that uh, Raziel has provided no receipts for this so far. There is no additional evidence of who she is talking about, and it's not the only time that she does this. I believe it is my responsibility to bring to light his problematic behaviour and patterns of abuse as both Java and Luca for those who may be in a precarious situation which do not allow them to speak or act. And this is where, this is the spin. This is the spin, because all of this, she tries repeatedly to frame herself as this abused victim who was led along by this evil person who used her and abused her and, and let her go. But I don't, I... When she first brought out some of this, I partially believed it. I were, but now I don't believe this woman at all. I absolutely do not believe a single word this woman says. Oh, I, I believe that the events that she described in this document happened. But I don't believe, I don't believe her spin on it at all. <laughs> I don't believe it at all. And we are going to get into my my rats about this. We're really going to get into my rats about this. And that's that's going to be my spin. That's what I'm going to bring to this discussion. Because I'm not going to read this document and be like, oh, wow. Oh, terrible. Oh, awful. No. I'm going to be commenting on this. Oh, boy. I'm going to be commenting a lot. <gasps> Uh, I seriously considered breaking out alcohol for this stream, but no. I don't want anything to disrupt this kind of cold, 
hard sensation of merciless determinism that is burning away in my gut at the moment. Also, thank you, uh, Azarn Bay and Io on Discord for finding the uh, the relevant uh, thread posts that I asked for. Thank you. Before I begin, just let me blow my nose one second, please. I apologize. Ah. <sighs> While some may be asking why I didn't do this sooner, I'll be completely honest. No one cared. I am to this day harassed and sent death threats by Lucas fanbase. They actively suppress, lie and spread vicious rumours to me and discredit me. I would get anonymous death threats in my Marshmallow and from Sock Puppet Twitter accounts, so I gave up for a long time. And again, this is the first lie that is being told here. Oh no, actually, that's different. I don't think that she's necessarily lying. I mean, the Fujoshis are insane. I can totally believe there's a bunch of Fujoshis that are harassing her, but... I'm sorry. If you are getting death threats, if you're getting harassed, if you're getting vicious rumours whatsoever spread about them, spread about you, post them. I don't believe you unless you post them. Give me receipts. Give me receipts. Show me what death threats you've gotten. Show me what nasty marshmallows you've gotten. Show me the Sock Puppet Twitter accounts. Because I don't believe you. Unless you... Again, I can believe that it happens. But I don't believe you. Because you're not showing me receipts. But I've brought some receipts. Oh boy. Oh boy have I brought some receipts. Uh, that, that shows what a... Massive self-report, all of this is. Now, oh, anyway, let's continue. Who am I? I have been streaming on Twitch since 2024, and I've been a Twitch partner since 2015. I worked as a community manager at a major gaming publisher for a couple of years before I got laid off and started working at one of the top global Hollywood agencies as a social media consultant for outside organisations and our own influencers. This is all to say I know a bit about streaming, social media, marketing, PR, at the very least, and how it should look from the inside. This I more or less believe. I feel that she may be overstating some of her qualifications, but if you even just Google her name, uh, Raziel Warmonic, you can find quite a lot of evidence that she had a pretty extensive streaming career, and various other people have said that she has been a streamer for a long time, so I can believe that she has some level of influence. And also, she seems to be genuinely a pretty decent designer, a pretty decent artist, a pretty decent composer, so I can believe that she's got a diverse set of skills. And uh, it's those set of skills that Luka Kaneshiro was very much taking advantage of. That much I completely believe. When Java and I met, I was known as Raziel Warmonic up until he became Luka Kaneshiro and I made a new alias, Mizuchi, to help distance myself from our extensive past together, under the advice of another Niji Sanji liver. And then she says, just say, down here, the only piece that's interesting is, he was 18 and I was 24 when we first came in contact with each other. This is already, already dreadful, already dreadful. And she admits here, while we were extremely close, we never dated and we never met up in real life. And this is probably the most... This is one of the most annoying things about all this. Magdalena's Rex just saying Doki never made a big manifesto of her problems in Niji Sanji, just some short statements. More should learn from her. Hell, Rika's statement was professional and she deserved termination. <laughs> the ancient Maxim Pixel GTFO. Yep. Hello, Libbroke Dokuta. VR chat was a mistake. I forgot to read the doc before. And don't worry, we'll be covering it. We will be covering it. And also, I think there's a... Apparently, the, the major version of this has gone down off the internet. Apparently, somebody reported it or whatever. But I mean, as you can tell from the, like, the file directory, I've got it saved on my hard drive. And uh, I'm certain that somebody will have uploaded it to uh, the thread on the virtual asylum. VR chat is clearly at fault for what's happening in Niji Yen. Curse you, VR chat. My friend, my friend, you you don't know. You don't know how real that set that statement is. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you broke Dokuta. Yeah, I don't know how to read your name. I'm sorry. I'm terrible with names. I'm English. I'm English. I'm terrible with names. 
Uh, yes. Java and I met in VR chat sometime early 2018. We were part of an 18 plus VR chat lobby ran by a streamer for content by the name of Rolf Gator, also known as Rob. These lobbies were roleplay orientated and took place in a bar world that Rolf Gator commissioned and owned. We started interacting with each other when Java asked Rolf Gator if he would set up his character on a date with mine. This was a very popular form of RP at the time in Rolf Gator's lobbies, so it was nothing out of the ordinary. The type of improved RP in this particular lobby thrived on silly, awkward situations mainly, so I agreed and we went on an, on an RP date. I even told Java after the... I'm going to comment on this, okay, but I want to read the entire thing first so that everybody gets full context. Or not the entire thing, but the next couple of paragraphs. Java after the RP, out of character... I'm oh, sorry. I even told Java after the RP, out of character, to make things abundantly clear and set boundaries that I was not interested in dating and that this was just strictly an RP thing, in which he agreed and said he wasn't looking to date either. We became friends and added each other on Discord early January 2019, where the majority of the conversations would discuss RP scenarios for our, our characters, talk about VR chat in general, and I would help him with his VR chat avatars and get feedback from him on mine. This is the most important paragraph and what I'm going to take the most, the most anger out of. And this is the paragraph that officially made me completely lose all sympathy for Raziel after what I researched. We gradually became close friends. Java would start inviting me to private worlds, keep this in mind, to open up about his home situation and his mental and physical abuse from his family. He would tell me that he never felt comfortable talking about this stuff with anyone before. So in return, I would share stories about my abuse growing up, as well as how I dealt with these tough situations. Java knew I had a long-term boyfriend at the time, and I played VR in my older brother's family room, so I did not have a private space. I never did anything sexual or suggestive in or outside of VR at this time. At this point, she's lying. She is absolutely 100% lying. Absolute and complete, utter lies. At what point does it stop being RP and start being real life, especially with people who have trouble separating fiction from reality? TLDR, she tried to groom Luca and she got groomed instead, then she's angry because Luca broke up with her. We'll get to that. But yeah, as I'm saying, I absolutely do not believe her. There are reasons to, to for my stance towards this, and I will highlight them now because I have a tab open. I have several tabs open. And the tab that I want to highlight, first of all, is the one that I looked up on Rolf Gator. Is this showing properly on stream? Yes, it is. Go away, pop-ups. The real Rolf Gator is a full-time Twitch streamer, known for his improv role-playing in VR chat, portraying his mischievous dragon girl, or his alligator robot persona in the past, sharing the same name. Now look at this character. Look at this, this mischievous character. This mischievous dragon girl character. He's using the tabs. Yes, I am. The power of the tabs flows through me, and by the power of the tabs, I declare these hoes guilty of ex of execution. But yes, mis mischievous dragon girl. Now, this this might be a bit rambling because uh, let me see if I can find this. Yes, here it goes. So I just wanted to highlight this section down here. Having lost his personal mute blue haze, he parted with Kokeru as his additional sidekick, blah, 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 blah. This is her teaching Kyo the ropes of streaming. Now, here's the part. Here and he and Crumpet hosting their off-stream degen nights parties with friends where anything goes and nothing is streamed. He started using a dragon girl avatar, which he claimed was extremely successful. 
Being a quirky mute dragon girl, he told he got 10 plus friend requests, guys asking to eat his ass, ass, and three dudes trying to have sex with him. Buddying up as mute sisters with Kyo, the original one was unfortunately deleted and he had to pick a new replacement. Often speaking about how dragon girls are, are OP, he became one himself. I now look down here, alternate role-playing personas. When not doing his typical RP as a money-loving, drama-creating, wingmanning robot, he duns other personas. He can do characters ranging from metrosexual elves to Brazilian businessmen to psychotic college students. Now, I read part of this... I read part of this... This... I don't, I don't even know what to call it. Kyo, the Kyo Kiniko, I have no idea, I have no idea. Maybe, I, I didn't look into it too much. So that's Zentrea. Zentrea was involved with these groups. I'll say that right now. I don't care if that gets back to me in some way. Zentrea is definitely part of the... He was part of these VR chat groups. This is where Zentrea... <clears throat> this is where Zentrea got his start in these VR chat groups. Now notice there, however, it says Degen Knights. This guy was a VR chat pimp. This guy arranged numerous VR chat sex parties. He organized his private rooms were virtual brothels. It's that fucking simple. It's that simple. These people were all involved in ERP, that is erotic roleplay. All of these people. They went so far as they had their integrations for VR chat that control things like sex toys, like the, the Love Sense brand of vibrators and so on has integrations for VR chat so that when you grope somebody in VR chat, like their vibrator goes off IRL, stuff like that. These people are all part of those groups. These people are the biggest pimps and whores and sluts of the VR chat world. The shit VR chat gets up to, Jesus Christ, I know. I was wondering when this shoe was going to drop. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. We're... So, I, let's go back. Let's go back to this. Let's go back to this again. Nope. No, that's not the one. No, that's that's the, that's uh, old tab. Actually, I can close that. That's, that's old news by now. We'll get down to that part. But, yeah. We were part of an 18-plus VR chat lobby. That means virtual brothel. Just to be clear, you didn't know VR chat is predominantly used as brothels before. Don't tell me there are underage people there too. I mean, do you do you seriously think there is any age verification for this group for these groups at all? Look me in the eyes. You tell me. You tell me, Nigel Nigerman. You tell me. What kind of age verification are these VR chat brothels going to be using? Like, look, type it out if you think, if you can think of a practical way that any VR chat brothel is going to be able to, like, age card people. Genuinely tell me. Because I don't, I don't know. <laughs> to think that somehow these guys don't get caught moving weirdly with a VR headset on. Asta was the equivalent of Ruffle Gator and had his own VR chat server. I can believe that. I can believe that. But yeah, but my central point, my central point in all this is that Raziel consistently throughout this entire document paints herself as an innocent victim. She says, oh, the type of improved RP in this particular lobby thrived on silly slash awkward situations. And she also says things like, there were, we set boundaries, we did not become sexual, she's lying. She is absolutely lying. These people were having ERP sessions pretty much every night, as far as I can tell. It's a great beta tester for a wider market for all the sex best games and toys. You must abhor the fat boy. <laughs> now, actually, we're going to get to him later, so I won't talk about the other person that this, that uh, Raziel name drops. But yeah, we've we've kind of torpedoed that. Again, Rolf Gator. Let me actually put to Rolf Gator's uh link in the chat directly so that people understand. So that people can go look uh, look at this themselves if they want to. Like you can see the utter degeneracy this person did. There is a big Aster callout doc almost as big as this one. Fenris, can you are you in my Discord? If you can link it in my Discord, I'd appreciate that. 
from back in the days he, when he stopped his previous persona. Mm. Like, Raziel is not even talking about half of this. Like, there are multiple people out there that are saying that, that Luca was like a VR chat pimp as well. Like, he was up there with the Rolf Gator and everything. And Rolf Gator is a big streamer. He has like 350,000 plus uh, followers on Twitch, which is another thing that really, you know, just just tease me off. That this VR chat Coomer stuff has just so much of an audience. And we'll get we'll get into it more later. Uh, where was I? Yes. On January 2019, J uh, Java would once again invite me to a private world. We were both in full body tracking in VR chat. Why would you go to a private world when you were in full body v tracking in VR chat? We discussed RP and made small talk before Java would go silent. At first, I thought maybe his mom came into the room, as she often did, and he muted himself to talk to her. I kept talking and I could see him moving slightly, but he kept silent. I asked him if everything was okay, and he said it was. I then asked him what he was doing. It was there, without asking me if it was okay, out of the blue, with no prior consent, and with boundaries already made clear that I did not want to date, he told me he was touching himself to my voice. I froze up. I honestly did not know how to respond at that moment, so I just kept talking. And again. This woman is blatantly, blatantly lying. This is a absolute lie. This woman went into v private VR chat with Luca to ERP with him. There is just absolutely no way this happens in any other way. If you think, if you believe Raziel, I've got a bridge to sell you. I have got several large monuments to sell you. This woman was already ERPing with Luca at this point. This woman was fully aware that she was in a VR chat den of inveterate coomers who were using things like Love Sense ads for their vibrators and various other things like that. That she has the audacity to say that she was shocked and horrified at Luca touching himself to her voice is just absolutely insane. It's a total, absolute lie. It is so laughably impossible. And this, uh, this is something that has really, really upset me in the last week or two. Because in the last two weeks, we had, uh, we had the Tora Kura stuff, and then we had the the Aka Rui stuff, and then we had um, some other stuff. There was like loads and loads of, uh, I think there's like four or five different accusations and documents out there. And when the Tora Kura and Lily stuff first first premiered, I was on Lily's side, I was like, oh, Torakura obviously did something nasty to you. I'm very sad that happened. I, I hope you managed to recover. And I took this to, to Kirsha's Discord, and I was commenting on it then, and Kirsha said to me, I think you're being incredibly naive. I think you're giving this woman far too much, far too much benefit of the doubt. And at the time, I pushed back on it, and I said, no, I, I, I don't... I like to believe women when they say they are offended by men acting sexually around them. I think that men should be better than this. And she just said to me, I think you're a fool. And this is my admission that she was completely right. I was a fool. I was a complete and total fool. Because I see this, I have seen this pattern now four or five times. Where a woman in one of these documents will get into a situation that is blatantly going to be sexual. And then they say things like, oh, I was shocked and I was horrified when this turned sexual. I was horrified when this person, when this person said, oh, they found me arousing. I don't believe it any longer. These women are just as culpable as the men. I have no sympathy for any of them. Proctor be like, hashtag believe all women. Yeah. I am absolutely 100% going to admit I was completely wrong. I was a fool and I was stupid. Also absolutely avoidable, I agree. 
With all my years on the internet, every single time there's some degenerate shit happening, there's women involved. The thing is, once it bites them in the ass, they have the ability to play victim. I agree. I completely agree. Like, if somebody wants to clip me saying this, they're, they're welcome to. I was absolutely wrong for giving any of these women the benefit of the doubt. All of them are guilty. All of them were just as culpable as the men they led on. In fact, I would go so far as to say that any of them could have just said at any point, I've had enough of this and I'm going to walk away. And there is nothing the man would have done. Because again, with Tora Kura, we have vast amounts of evidence that Tora Kura was overtly sexual in people's DMs. He asked people for nudes, he was lewd towards them. But we also have tons of evidence that every single time that women told him to stop, that women told him that they didn't find it attractive, that they didn't find that they that this crossed a boundary. They he stopped. There is not one single piece of evidence that Tora Kura ever crossed somebody's boundary after they deliberately set that boundary. Not one piece of evidence. And yet Tora Kura is scum. I think he is a pathetic Kuma who should never have done anything like he did. At the same time, the double standard that exists there is absurd. Many women, ha ha ha, I love sewing. The same women, why am I reaping this, WTF? Yeah, yeah. Somebody dropped a link and info dump. Thank you very much, Style. I'll look at that in a, in a minute. Why on earth was that? Was I ghost pinged somewhere? Oh, there we are. But yeah, that's that's how I that's how I am, Redmi. me. <laughs> <laughs> As Alkin streamers just said, apologies for inaudible background noise. You see, the thing is, I have a condenser microphone, so I'm I'm really confused. Everybody says that condenser microphones pick up everything, so I have no idea how it is that because I can hear quite clearly noises around me right now. I can hear birds singing. I can hear my birds squawking and various things. Women exist. Day ruined. Hello, Bagstan. Hello. Nice to see you. Uh, but yeah, in summary, this is just a comedic lie, and I, I refuse to believe any of it any longer. I absolutely refuse to believe anyone any more of these stupid situations that women keep saying they got themselves into. Because I don't believe it. <laughs> I, the well has been utterly poisoned. I can no longer give, and I can give immense amounts of the benefit of the doubt. I proactively do my best to live up to my my education, to believe that people can be better than what they are. But in this case, I just don't believe it. You know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Ugh. Oh, I actually really like that. The the uh, extension even colors the, the screenshot so they stand out more. That's a really nice touch. I didn't realize it did that. Did that. I'm not going to look too hard at the at the screenshots and so on, because anybody can look at the document and see those. It's basically just her and him talking and substantiating stuff that she already highlights. I'm female, but I exist. I mean, I don't want I don't want people to think that I'm necessarily talking down to women about this. But I, I will say I, I'm just tired of this line of reasoning. How has Hololive been able to keep their talents fairly li li yabless? Yabless. That's a that's a word that I find difficult to pronounce. I think that Hololive just has decent management. That's as that's simply it. Also, sorry, I'm I'm fiddling with a bottle at the moment. At some point, I would start streaming again. We both continue to appear in Rothgator's in Ruffle. Is it Ruffle? It's been so many years. Like, Ruffle is like a dead internet term at this point. Nobody used it. Like, Ruffle, like, Ruffle was a word, was an abbreviation that was used when I was a child on the internet. And it just kind of fell out of favor. So, seeing it again is a real blast from the past. It tells me that Ruffle Gator is a very old person. In which Java would be heavily involved of his own volition. He would go so far as to wake up early in the morning so he could be on my stream. I did not ask him to be on my stream, he wanted to do it of his own accord. Jokes and teasing started to form around him orbiting and being lost without me on Ruffle Gator's own stream. 
We even had an emote on my channel dedicated to him named Raz Orbiter that was just his VR chat avatar's face. I do greatly appreciate him helping me and appearing on my stream to this day, however. This is just absolute blatant cover nonsense. It was like, oh, I, I totally appreciate this man that I have I am spending like 58 pages trashing and doing my best to cancel and destroy in every way. I, I greatly appreciate him, though. You know, it's just like like when an Arab terrorist goes to execute, you know, a filthy Western, you know, child of Satan. The, you know, it's it's the, it's definitely sincere if they go, you know, I, I really appreciate you. You you were the best. You were the best agent of Satan I ever shot dead in the back of the head and threw off a building. <laughs> My Rufflecopter goes soy soy soy. <laughs> it's Rufflegate, Rufflegator, Rolfcopter. Look, I also yes, I DM'd you on X slash Twitter. Yes, I'm female. Yes, I'm a kid soon. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Sorry, sorry. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of spacing out a tiny bit from all of this because it's so silly. Uh, where am I? Yes. Sorry, literally somebody sent me a Twitter DM right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, this was just the start of the obsessive and possessive behaviour by him. Off stream, we would hang out in VR chat as well as visit public worlds with our friend groups to meet and talk with new people. His HTC headset would break down and he would be without it for a couple of months. During this time... During this time, I would learn to lap dance in VR chat, and he would become upset when I would dance for other people or even talk to other guys if he didn't like how they approached or jokingly flirted with me. We got into a lot of arguments over this. I would tell him multiple times to knock it off, and it wasn't appropriate. I'm quite sure Raziel decided to drop this document seeing the other tube VTuber Me Too attempts in the last few weeks, coupled with Niji Sanji's AR Live to get even more eyes on it. I agree. I agree 100% as well, as, as Reinigan said. Now, guys, I'm going to say that Luca is not a particularly nice person. I believe that he is an unpleasant individual. I can believe that he is, in many ways, an abusive and exploitive person. However, I want you to put yourself in his shoes for a second. Now, it's quite obvious that him and Raziel had at least maybe a toxic, maybe a dysfunctional, but a genuine relationship at one point or another. And so, you have been with this woman for quite some time, and then your headset breaks. So you are unable to hang out with her in the space where you have regularly been intimate. And then while you are offline, while you cannot connect with her, she begins to learn how to lap dance. And she starts giving lap dances to random men in VR chat. And then when you complain about it, she tells you, oh, it's just me, it's my boundaries, you can't do anything about it. Wouldn't you be just a tiny bit pissed off? I mean, this is the most understandable beef that I can see that Luca can have with this woman. And it it highlights the relationship they had. Because Raziel is very obviously obsessed with Luca. We'll, we'll see more of that later on. She is very, very parasocial towards Luca. She is extremely obsessive of him. You, you do not make this, this kind of document about a man who you are not deeply obsessed with. However, if I may offer a counter-argument, use a thought. <laughs> yeah, 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 I agree. But yeah, this is the most legitimate thing I can see. I can see Luca being angry at Raziel over. Now, the, 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 their, their relationship should never have begun to begin with. It's very obvious. All of this Me Too's do more self-reporting than cancelling, like that sex advertisement the other day. VR chat was a mistake. This seems like a toxic move to get a reaction from him. That's, that's actually not a bad point. That's not a bad point at all. 
That's a that's a reasonable again. That's that's a, that's an angle. I don't necessarily one hundred percent agree with it, but I think it's a perfectly legitimate uh, angle. After establishing more boundaries and being understood by both of us, we were able to continue our friendship. But this isn't to say smoothly. I still felt obligated to talk and be with him because of the way he would get upset, or at least I felt like I had to keep my conversations with others short. Now again, this is really unpleasant reframing again, because again, she was the one above, in literally the paragraph above, who says she was soliciting sexual attention from other men. And his reaction to this is to justifiably, from a primal emotional standpoint, be upset about this. And then she says, she now reframes this. She says, oh, I felt obligated to talk and be with him. You know, I did something that I knew would piss him off. But then I felt obligated to keep talking to him. I felt like I couldn't even go visit another friend in VR chat real quick to say hi. Um, without potentially upsetting him. We were always with other friends when I did this, so I wasn't leaving him alone. Not that it should have mattered. Now notice how she just kind of cuts off here and moves on to a completely different topic. And I don't believe any of this. I really don't. I believe that she wanted to simultaneously have Luca at her beck and call while also ERPing with other men in VR chat. That's how I read this. And I think that that is wrong. I don't, I don't think that Luca's right, but I think that Raziel is absolutely in the wrong. And the way she ends this, the way she just cuts this off with no further context, is what further convinces me that this is a self-report on her part. And when she says things like, I couldn't even visit another friend, I'm convinced that she says, I couldn't even ERP with another friend. She wanted to go in other private rooms and have ERP away from Luca, and he didn't like that. Which is a tale as old as time on the... ERP role-playing scene. <sighs> this is why I'm so dis disgusted by all of these people. They are acting so... <sighs> <sighs> you can tell from the, from the tone of my voice how, how my general feelings about all of this. <sighs> oh, I got one... Uh, sorry, one second. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm being mildly distracted because people are still talking to me about various things while, while this is going on. Also, ASMR, what are you talking about? I, I haven't done any ASMR here. <laughs> I've not, I, no ASMR has been done yet this stream, so Luca was the nice guy. I, I would say that's a fairly good estimation. I mean, Luca comes across as extremely passive-aggressive in all of this. And this is... <laughs> Java struggles with respecting the LGBTQIA plus community based. <laughs> he would admit to harassing a trans male co-worker by misgendering them on purpose. His bitch was being hypocritical about biology and S, you know the thing I was talking about. If you get a blood transfusion from an African guy, then logically you are part African for a bit. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I, 
hadn't read these screenshots before. I, I looked through all the text, but I hadn't read the screenshots. Oh my... <laughs> If you get a blood transfusion from an African guy, logically you were part African for it. <laughs> uh, we ha I wish Short was here. I wish Short was here. Or I I'm not. Sh I'm not sure if there are any other any other Africans in the chat. But Africans in the chat, can you confirm or deny? Is is Luca s speaking biological truth here? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, what the hell? Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Yeah, that was surely was the... I just can't believe that <sighs> He has a history of being scared of males who identify as gay. He would get freaked out if a male hit on him or if someone joked about him being gay in any way. <laughs> Oh, but look, this commentary, my friend referred to her as a he, and I was like, she's a girl. The, the bitch I was talking to last week told me to leave. I was like, that's a bit hypocritical of you because biologically she's a girl. Now you're telling me to believe logic more than biology when you told me the reverse last week. Pick your battles. This probably shouldn't be one of them. I mean, honestly, Raziel, I mean, not Raziel. Ugh. <laughs> Honestly, like Luca, Luca just. <laughs> How dare men be afraid of men flirting? Yeah, like this is. <sighs> Pretty sure that's Luca making an obviously ridiculous example before pandering to us. I mean, calling a female her based. Yeah, I know, Dazzle. I mean, this is the kind of commentary that. It's it's very much kind of leftists. Please murder this person. Whereas everybody else is like. Damn, bro, that's kind of funny. <laughs> that's kind of based, mate. Huh? Uh, my mum was asking me if I have a girlfriend. Let's, let's read this again. He would get freaked out if a male hit on him or if someone joked about him being gay in any way. And then right down here, my mum was asking me if I have a girlfriend and I had said no. And she's like, why? And I told her I was gay. I hate when people say there's a little gay in everyone. That's not being freaked out if a male hit on him or if someone joked about him being gay in any way. Like, he's making the joke here and she's like, why? And I told her I was gay. So he makes the gay joke. And then down here... And then down here it says, I hate when people say there's a little gay in everyone. Like, that's not freaking out. That's just an opinion, and that's a statement. And that's not even a statement that I disagree with. I, I, would, I would say that too. I think that it's ridiculous to say there's a little gay in everyone. I don't see any problem with this. Luca was being groomed, was being groomed into being a gay since 15 at most, by the way. Uh, do you have a particular source for that, Dazzle? Why is there a little guy in you? Tell him to pull out this kind of hero. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I'm glad I didn't look at these screenshots because I'm very happy because this, this kind of humor is something I desperately needed in this stream. <clears throat> This is a mindset he had not grown out of since we last spoke. In the screenshot below, you can see as late as, as 2023, he expressed that transgender individuals make him uncomfortable, despite the role Java often played as Rolf Gator, where he would hit on males while pretending to be a woman. Yeah, trans people make me uncomfortable and pregnant women. Again, there is no context to this. This could be a joke. The, the, above, it could be a joke or commentary. Like, I don't believe... <coughs> oh, thank you, uh... Fukona Yuki. I think that's how you pronounce your name in Japanese. Like, thank you for subscribing. I've heard Locker talk like this a bunch, but given he's a cross-dressing cross ERPer, it comes across as closeted. 
Now, I'm going to play... I'm going to steal man for Luca here a little bit. And again, let, let, me unders let me underscore the fact that I still think Luca is a disgusting degenerate. But this is something I kind of think that I can see his point on. Because she deliberately omitted things. She absolutely did, 100%. It's a very common thing in current year to say, oh, like, traps are just trans. Like, like cross-dressers are automatically trans. You, you can't just say, oh, it's a man dressing as a woman. Oh no, it's a man embracing his inner feminine spirit, his inner lesbian soul. <laughs> Which, and if Luca is pushing back against that and saying, and saying just like, yeah, I play, you know, I play a female character, but that doesn't make me gay or trans or whatever. I'm sure that somebody like Kirisha would disagree, but... To me, that's perfectly fine. That's just pointing out something that is pretty obvious to me. Playing a female character in in a role-playing scenario is not a hint that you're trans. You're just playing a female character, okay? If you're being weird and creepy and sexual towards men, then to be uh, then to be honest, that's weird. It, it's it might hint at something in you, but again, just saying, hey, I'm not trans, and it's stupid to say that I'm trans just because I play a female character. That's a perfectly rational take. Uh. <clears throat> This is like the sixth something time this married woman who ruined her marriage by dating a 17 year old, even with everything Luca did, you can't make a good case for her. I overall agree. Luca's just baiting people in VR chat. Yeah, yeah. He screens Dumbo because he's 17, maybe. Initial gay slash trans screens posted in 2019 at these, and he's already uncomfortable with the gay stuff. Meanwhile, he, meaning he did run into this stuff in VR chat. Yeah. Now, I will, I just want to say that. I don't think we have conclusive proof that Luca was underaged when he first met Raziel. I, I know that it was something that a lot of people said, but I do not recall seeing any hard evidence that he was underage. Now, I'm willing to believe he was, but I, I can simply say that I have not seen hard evidence either way. And But I think Raziel did hint that he was. I forget if she said outright that she met him when he was 17. But I mean, if she did, then I'll take her word for it. But uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not going to say one way or another because I just cannot say for certainty. And that's the kind of accusation that I'm definitely not going to put weight into unless I physically see absolute receipts before my eyes. I hope you understand that. I hope you understand that. <laughs> <sighs> Java and I would make friends with someone else by the name of Trouser Gravy, and we all became close friends. Trouser and I were older than Java, so we would often advise him on his ha hard situations online than IRL. We even split the costs of gifts and sent to him to send to him for things like his birthday and Christmas. Java would then start to lie about his activities to both of us, or blow us off when we planned to do something together as a group, like play Monster Hunter. Trouser Gravy also would be there to see Java get upset over the above aforementioned events. Tr Trouser Gravy and I would heavily encourage Java to go out with his friends IRL and even meet with girls he still talked to after high school and were, inter and were still interested in him. <sighs> now, Trouser Gravy is something of an internet ghost. I have not been able to find anything on Trouser Gravy except for one very specific... A uh, thing that I will point out. Uh, good thing to mention. Good job. Question to ask: Are you Cornish? Perhaps I am English. I was. My parents are lived in Cornwall for or near Cornwall for a while. Now, my my parents are from the Midlands. Uh, are from the the Midlands in England between like Cornwall between like uh the the Cornwall Wales and and London that kind of area. Uh, my mother has a very strong Devonshire accent and. Uh, I've kind of inherited uh, uh, Devonshire accents in some respects, some people say. He's from Northern Ireland. No, I'm not. I'm from Britain originally, and I live in Southern Ireland. Southern Ireland is vastly better than Northern Ireland. Don't let me, don't maybe tangent on that. <coughs> uh, Proctor is corny, not Cornish. <laughs> Trouser gravy sounds like the ID of a diaper slash scat fetishist. It would not surprise me. <laughs> 
I looked up his alt Twitter accounts that are mentioned later in the doc, even if he's 18 at the time, mentally he's still an absolute child. Yep, I agree. But the thing about Trouser Gravy is that I looked up, I looked him up on Google, and it's interesting that I found this. Now, this is a horny baby last live eight months ago. I'm a professional Ungabunga Viking monster hunter dual blade slash longsword player. FF, what is this in Roman numerals? Is this Final Fantasy 14 or something? And an art east? What more can you want, baby? <laughs> now, notice that she says monster hunter and Final Fantasy Monk. Now, we we know from this from this document that together as a group, we like to play Monster Hunter. Look right down here. Top donators. Look at this top donators part. Actually, I think my... Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, look down here. Let's, let's just zoom in a tiny bit. Top donators. Emir Blank, Alchemy, I, I Her, I Her as always, You're an Idiot, Trouser Gravy. $646. So I think this was a 14. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Disgusting weapon of choice. <laughs> Devonshire or Devonshire. Uh, depends if you want to be punched. Her weapon pronouns suck. <laughs> But yeah, this is just a, this is just a tiny. I have no extra commentary on this, but this is the only reference that I can find to a trouser gravy being associated with any of these people. So maybe this is a thread that somebody else wants to look down. But I just thought it was an interesting highlight. Also, give me a second. I need to blow my nose again. I, I wish to apologize because I had a I had a cold last week and it's left me with my sinuses just a bit inflamed for some reason. One second. Okay, I'm back now. Sorry about that. Ah, but there's another reference that we're going to get to. Here we see a, a trouser gravy commenting about his family life. His family life was a big one. How his mom treated him was usually the top one. Him never doing what he said he was going to do. Him doing the opposite of what he said he was going to do. Or just lying about it, about doing it badly. Like getting caught hanging out with doing something he said he literally wasn't doing. There was one I remember actually about people looting him. So I told him to set boundaries, but he never did. And just complained about it a lot, but never did anything. Java was not a good liar. He would come up with fake excuses to blow us off, then get on VR chat to be on Rufflegator's stream, which are two very easy things to look up. There is no offline mode in VR chat, and he was on our friend's stream. We would fight about him lying to me about this. Our arguments became more frequent. I would have to sit there and console him for hours as he would get upset over him as he would get upset over him lying, but also over menial things like me not caring about the same anime as him. Our friendship still persisted, however. Now, this is another uh, another knot in the in the cord in the of the noose. <coughs> is that we see a very toxic relationship forming? Is that Raziel has repeatedly at this point said that this being a recent conversation means it's easily fakeable? She could have just told Trouser to say these things. I agree. Uh, this that is another good point. Is that Raziel has had multiple warning signs so far. She's painting Luca as this miserable, childish, childish, self-indulgent, pathetic individual. And at no point does she really say why they are friends. Why are these people friends still? Now, I'm not convinced. This is a rat, but I, st I think they were still having ERP at this point. I think they were still having ERP sessions. And that the ERP sessions were what was tying them together. That's my rat. That's my theory. That's just a game theory. That's just a thought theory. But that's what I think. And they were friends because they, hang they hung out and they did a lot of sexy stuff in VR together. And they used to coom together a lot. That's my, that's my theory. Ah. Oh, uh... Here it is. Java would start to stream on his Twitch channel under the name of Java. 
He started to do this after gaining popularity by pretending to be a girl in VR chat to trick popular streamers, such as Soda Poppin. We're gonna get to him in a moment. By seducing them and then revealing he was a guy on Rufflegator's stream, I would more or less stop streaming to help Java focus on his stream. This is when I would start to manage his channel and community. My work included keeping him company on stream per request, suggesting games for him to, ba to play based on popularity, managing sponsors, blah, 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 coming with a subathon, executing goals, and streaming. Java would lie about his revenue to me, making less than he was talking than he was telling me during this time about going to school. He wasn't even enrolled, among various other things. Is there anything good that came out of engaging in ERP always leads to disaster? I 100% agree. You should never engage in ERP ever. Do not coom. Do not. Do not. Practice retention. Their friendship was seven inches thick by that point. <laughs> I think I think the crusty rags were seven inches thick by that point, big wheel. <laughs> but yeah, this, again, this paints her in a terrible light. Because let's assume, let's assume for a second that this is all still completely platonic. That they're not cooming in VR chat with each other all the time. Isn't retention one of the big things Gooners do? Um, I don't... Again, I have no knowledge of Gooner culture, so... <laughs> That's something that you would probably be better off talking about than me, Thrang. But let's assume for a second they were completely platonic during all of this time. The question becomes, why is Raziel giving up so much of her own life to be with this person that she is actively painting as an abusive, narcissistic, unpleasant person to be around? This, this catfisher, this trap, this catfisher, all these other things that she's implying that he is. It makes absolutely no sense why she would still be with him, why she would do things like keeping him company, manage him games, suggest things, be his manager, literally be a, be a manager for him. Yeah, press X to doubt. <laughs> yeah, none of this makes sense. None of this makes sense. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, also Soda Poppin. Now Soda Poppin is a very interesting name, because again, Let's head over to here. Let's look at VR chat um, legends again. Soda Poppin, or Soda for short, is Soda Poppin's persona when visiting VR chat. He portrays a small, lowly character. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure. Is that lowly? Like that's got far too large chests for 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 lowly. I I don't know much about VR chat, so maybe that's tiny or whatever. But that doesn't look like a lowly to me. Maybe it's just really short, and that just the camera angle makes it look taller. <laughs> And here we have, look at this. That's, I'm not even going to say that. Joining Ruffle Gator. Soda Poppin once again returned to VR chat when he visited Rob Rob's private lobby on his new Necro Knights map on March 31st while not streaming and was introduced to his group of friends and the usual shenanigans that occur there. By usual shenanigans, they mean ERP. Together with Vigor, both portraying lowly characters, they caused a stir. Both got adopted by the big Meech as his bruh. I want to kill everyone. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. Look at these names. XQC. Hassan Abi. I don't know who Poke, who Poke Lols is. Murder Crumpet. Together with Vigor, they attempted to convince their adoptive daddy, Meech, to seal the deal with Murder Crumpet by having sex with him so he could become their mom. I'm not saying anything, by the way. I'm just scrolling. <sighs> Why is there a wiki that's not lonely in any way? I, I kind of agree. But yeah. Can you see why I have... I have this message at the top of the screen right now, and why this message is staying. This is the best part. I, I, it's the worst part. It's the worst part. These people need Jesus. These people, these people need a flamethrower. These are grown men who were also gigantic streamers at the time. It's also tiresome. How did their careers not take damage? 
Because they're all fucking in it together. This is why nobody speaks out against Marina. This is why nobody speaks out against Sylve Spark. They are all in this together. They are all part of these... They are all part of these Coomer chats. They are all part of these groups that have ERP together. They are all part of these degenerate places where they share porn and all this kind of stuff. That's why none of them will speak out against each other, because they all know they do these things. None of them, none of them are different from each other. This isn't even the worst part. Keep going until you hit the bottom. Uh, let me have a look. Wait, do you mean like the like when you say bottom? What do you mean like the gallery or what's or whatever? On March 28th, he showed off his new female avatar while debuting his new meta hot tub stream, cementing himself even higher on the VR chat progression meme chart. Trivia. What was this? Soda no longer finds real women attractive. The bottom of the storyline. Storyline. I suppose that's what you mean, like the hot tub stuff. So Soda Poppin kind of pioneered the hot tub stuff. To be fair, for the vast majority of Zoomers, their audience, this shit is acceptable. This rabbit hole goes deep. Oh yeah, because here's the thing. You go over to Soda Poppin's live stream. Let's I've got Soda Poppin's YouTube channel open. Let's have a look. I wonder who that is. Guys, do you notice? Do you notice uh, who who is in these clips? Do you notice who 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 that thumbnail is? Plunderstorm's most dysfunctional duo. Huh. He's Vibe's boyfriend. He is Vibe's boyfriend. Do you see what I mean when I say this rabbit hole goes deep and why none of these people speak out against each other? Because they're all in it. They're all part of this. They're all graduates from this... This VR chat... This VR chat degeneracy. And it's the same with Marina... It's the same with all these other people. Because let me, because let me just go back. Let me actually, it's, it was sent to me on Discord, so I will just look at it on. It's. Uh, I'll have to give me one second. I will have to look at this on Discord. Uh where is it? Mentions. Oh God damn it! Where 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 is it in my mentions? It's in cafeteria. It's in cafeteria. No no no. It's in. It is in the control room. Here it is. Here it is. So this is this is Smegmar, and you might remember. You might remember her. You might remember her. Proctor, please don't start VTube Gate. They're all in this together. Yeah, they are. Welcome to Poppins Island. It's like Epstein's but virtual. Yeah, but let's let's look at Smegmar because she was one of the people. This is the VT Rainbow thread. The now the Marina VT disintegration thread, and Smegmar here. This is from December the seventeenth. Back when I was new to VTubing, I went by Nova, and I was an event hoster IRL. So after helping run the first VTuber prom event, it was a shit show, I met a lot of cool creators in the space at the time. The afterglow started when a fairly known creator made a tweet jokingly saying how they wish someone would host a party during COVID since everyone was cooped up inside. I commented, having experience with doing this already, about hosting such an event. It was so successful, over 80 people RSVP'd, I decided to make the Afterglow an official event that I would host once a month on the last Saturday of the month at the same time. <laughs> I was very strict about my parties being for everyone regardless of size. Any VTuber or someone who was a creator for VTubers uh, was allowed, although I'd say about more than half of the attendees were fairly sizable creators. And down here... She talks about, The introduction to Marina was when one of my friends who used to be on the staff team asked if their friend could join my staff to host a NSFW after event at my parties. I was pretty against this and told her no. And it turns out that Marina had decided that since I said no, she would host her own parties altogether. It wasn't a problem for a while, but I did notice Marina getting in and schmoozing with people for their Discord information. 
I remember talking to one of my good friends who was up and coming at that time and Marina barged in interrupting our conversation just to get their Discord details and then leave after complimenting something that was popping up, popping off of her theirs. And she talks about really big content creators. Now, Smegma does not name names here. But this highlights it is all interconnected. I would not be surprised if Marina and like I, in fact I had uh, I had somebody else verify to me independently yeah that this is that Marina is part of this too. These people are all part of one giant incestuous VR chat Coomer community. And as I said at the start of this stream, this is why I'm only interested in people like Kirsha now. I only really want to watch people who I can trust are not involved in any of this absolute bullshit. Because these people are evil. I'm gonna say it right out. Like, I know that Marina has done dreadful, traumatizing, evil things to people who are disabled, of people who are physically and mentally impaired to a serious degree. Hashtag Goongate, yeah. And these people have abused and hurt other people who are much less innocent, who are much more innocent, sorry, who are much nicer, who have who have been smaller, and just for the, for the fact there have been smaller content creators than they can push around. Evil backroom dealings can't stand to it. How do you join these communities asking for a friend? <laughs> And this is what gets me so very angry. This is what takes it out of the realm of haha, stupid people on the internet being stupid and into I genuinely am angry about this territory for me. Because I just want people to have fun. Only VTubers Proctor likes are the ones who get matty. I'm not sure quite what you mean there, uh, stock footage. Like, if you want to be a degenerate, or if you want to be a coomer, or whatever. That's fine. You can be a coomer. You can do ERP. I don't... It's not my place to say that you are a bad person. I honestly think you're a pretty bad person if, you, if you're a coomer in VR chat and you do all this stuff. But you can do it, okay? I'm not going to say you can't. I'm saying you probably shouldn't, but I'm, it's not my place to say you shouldn't. But the thing is, when you get involved with this, you are being exposed to people who have no morals. They are degenerates. They are narcissists. These communities attract narcissists like flies to honey. And narcissists have no standards. They will go after people and they will abuse them and they will hurt them in as many ways as they can and they won't care. Because they don't have empathy. They don't have feelings towards these people. And that's what really pisses me off. That there are VTubers out there with thousands and thousands of viewers who think they're say-so, who think they're wonderful, who think they're lovely, who, you know, look at them when they tweet out, when they retweet small content creators and, and say, oh, support small streamers, VTubing is a family, all this stuff. And yet behind the scenes, they have this history. This history of VR chat cooming, of bullying smaller content creators, of ousting people, of having petty drama because somebody wanted to sleep with somebody else. And it's all so tiresome. It's all so tiresome, guys. It's all so tiresome. <sighs> anyway, I just want to get that off my chest because it really does does embitter me at times to to the reality of the of the VTuber industry. Again, I don't think that all VTubers are like this, but it's why you, you should hold you should hold your Oshis accountable. If you like a streamer, I think at this point it's your duty to be to at least look into their background a tiny bit, to make sure that your your donos, your support is going towards a person that you would be happy to associate with in real life, who you'd be happy to share dinner with. Or or any of these kind of things. Don't enable, don't let people who are bad people 
Take hold of your heart, or your feelings, or your wallet. Don't give them the pleasure of having your emotional investment when behind the mask they've done some very nasty, unpleasant things to people. I think that's a duty that every fan should have, honestly. To, to do that much research, even, even if it's just a little bit. It's like it's like high school. I, I agree, Muffy Graves, it really is like high school. This is why Say So Ness was so highly valued when Hollow came out. It was a break from all this murky Coomer shit that everyone is bare minimum adjacent to. Adjacent to. Uh, take hold of your wallet and your beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, VTubing is a family, Alabama family. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Also, let me just get rid of that pin message because it's pointless now. Uh, I'm amazed I have so much CCV when I'm streaming at this time in the afternoon. I fully expect it because it's like, uh, yeah, it's like 9.20 uh, Pacific Standard and it's uh, 12.21 EST. So I'm, I'm very grateful that everybody has turned out for this. I really am grateful. Thank you very much. Because, I mean, if I wanted to, I could probably have streamed later in the day and got a higher CCV, but I want to get this off my chest, dudes. I just want to get this off my chest. Let's get back to this. Let's get back to this crap. Uh, you've been live for an hour, hour and a half. Nice. I don't owe she any EN girl aside from Nia, whose only red flag literally is that she's friends with Mana. <laughs> Uh. Congratulations on a hundred on a hundred plus CCV. I mean, I've had I've had a hundred plus CCV in several previous streams. I think my highest was when like the first um the first uh Selen document came out, and I had something like four hundred peak CCV during that because I was able to like stream on it less than an hour after it dropped, and um. You know, tons of people watched, and my average CCV now is about 60, 70. Your tweet hit 50, 500,000 views. I can't believe that, because I've been told... I've seen people say, oh, you can't say nasty things on Twitch. Like, Twitch will proactively deplatform your tweet, or it'll hide your tweet in the algorithm if you say nasty things or unpleasant stuff about people. <coughs> I feel relatively safe. My spooder, oh, she's not a Cooper degenerate behind the curtains and because she's too embarrassed by mild jokes. Uh, if you're talking about Amir, Amir is a lovely, lovely person. Amir is a wonderful streamer, is a, is a, is a darling. Amir is a darling. Okay, Amir is one of the nicest streamers that I have ever seen. You should hold a person like Amir close. You should die for, for a spider like Amir, okay? You should, you sh that woman is worth shedding blood for. There are no wrong tactics, only wrong targets. My Kami Astri, my Kamioshi, Lucastri Mavia seems like the honest type. Check the groom cord. Uh, what part of the groom cord? Like, there's tons of it. VTuber, dis is it VTuber discussion? It's over. The tourists are coming. Okay, five hundred thirty-seven. Good grief! It's it must be going up by thousands a minute at this point. How? <laughs> <laughs> so let me just pin that in Discord. There we go. Wait, do I have my VPN off or on? I have my VPN on. Are you joking? <laughs> do you know if uh, Mavia is safe? I've never heard anything negative about Mavia. Is Kalia safe? I have never heard anything bad about Kalia. I think that Kalia is too much of an of a gaming artist to have anything nasty going on about her. Super duper. Every day I'm convinced that you're you're a parody. Uh, he would end up making let me just get back to this, sorry. He would end up making two sock puppet Twitter accounts to harass others during the Niji Sanji audition process. One named Lolly Springer, the other Hoggers Woggers. And here we have <coughs> <laughs> Male VTubers ATM are not just are just not entertaining. This is true. They are more focused on complaining and being sad about being a male VTuber. 98% don't have a personality for it. We've yet to see a dominant individual male VTuber, and I can only name a couple that would take the spot soon. 
I mean, honestly, no real lies were said during this tweet, as far as I know. Is this was before Hollow Stars or anything? I've got two friends that got their email two weeks and a half ago. Aside from that, they can't say anything else. If you haven't gotten anything, you didn't make it. Am I on screen? Yes, I did. Sorry, I wanted to make sure my OBS was working. I got my second email from Niji Sanji. I wonder, will, when will there be an individual male-dominant VTuber that doesn't complain all the time about being oppressed? Rather, actually prove that male VTubers can just do that as well. I am a dominant male VTuber, and I don't claim about being oppressed. <sighs> I would attempt to get into these accounts. Now, this is... This is where things take a turn, okay? I would attempt to get into these accounts by using the same passwords he had given me before for other things. It worked. So I verified these accounts were his by almost gaining access to them, in which Twitter said an email was sent to an email I recognized as his for 2FA. He wasn't even aware he was in Nichisanji at this point, as it was still too early in the process when I confirmed the accounts were his, I confronted him about it. This is stalker behavior. This is absolutely stalker behavior. This is not, this is a red flag. If a woman is trying to get into your social media accounts, leave that woman. I'm serious. Get the hell away from that woman. This is not something that any person should admit to doing. This is absolutely a red flag, and it's a self report. This means that she realized at this point that he was getting into Niji Sanji, and she realized, oh god, he's getting away from me. This alt shit is old. I, I remember this being talked about in the farmers, but there was no con conf confirmation it was him back then. Now, I do think that. Why does it always go back to Niji Sanji? Um, super duper, have you even been watching? Well, I suppose it is like something like. I have no idea what kind of a clock it is in uh, California at the moment, but it's some ridiculous time. He was too Sigma for Hollow Stars. <laughs> Pardon me. Proctor dominant. I am a dominant man. I will continue saying that. <laughs> I have no idea why any man would want to be submissive. It's just it's such such a, a degenerate thing to do to be submissive to a woman. Because Niji Sanji has no standards, yep, and Niji Sanji has no standards. But yes, I was saying, if a woman ever admits to trying to get into your personal accounts, she's a stalker. You should leave. Get away. He would then admit to it when I showed him the proof of me getting into the accounts. I felt obligated to cover this up to the people who were accusing him. I would also prevent him from talking about other stuff that would get him into trouble, such as the ban he would incur while in the popular GTAVRP server NoPixel for sexual harassment. <laughs> this I thought, I did actually read this screenshot and I found it hilarious. Let's have a look. We had multi multiple reports of you pushing sexual harassment during and going against TOS on a 911 call. The RPer wasn't comfortable with the direction it was heading, in terms of him RPing that his testicle was damaged, causing him to sound like a woman and begging us to help him put it back. You made a racially offensive remark during the heli ride back to the city as well, tried to grab EMSs inappropriately, forcing this type of ERP of RP on others when they continue to ask you to stop and refuse the direction you were going into is a direct TOS and rule break of no pixel and twitch i wanted to reach out to you and let you know why you are being removed from the community at this time <laughs> uh but what if it were kirsha i mean kirsha at least has been gaslit by so many men i can understand it when she says she's paranoid TFW, no stalker GF to tie you up in her basement and feed you cookies made with her. <laughs> uh, hello, meaty learner. Thank you for entering the asylum. No fun allowed. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Huh? 
but yeah, I can, from everything that uh, has been said about Luca before, I can totally believe this part of the of her allegations. I can 100% believe that this is something that Luca did. And again, I can see Luca just being like, haha, funny lol. Because again, this is funny. This is stupid and it's funny. Like, there's nothing, this is not sexual harassment or any nonsense like that. This is a bunch of idiots faffing around in GTA. Like, this thing of all the things is <laughs> TFW, no man to call you bigger on a helicopter ride. <laughs> like, you're in just your, your balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not, uh, uh, this is not the incriminating evidence she thinks that it is. <laughs> If you ever get a woman like Kirsha, keep her with your life, even if she's into sounding. Brain cells have officially left the conversation. <laughs> but now we're on to the history as Luca. I remember when Java got an email asking for an interview from Any Color as we were hanging out in VR chat together when we he, when he randomly started to shout and exclaim that he got an email. We were both beyond excited. He asked that he, me what he should wear, got sent me a pic of his outfit before the video interview to make sure he looked okay, and told me about what they said and asked him for an interview. He would be accepted to Niji Sanji's roster to debut in the first English male wave in Luxium. Yep. Our relationship was still very good at this point. We would spitball. She constantly says this. Our relationship was still very good. And yet right up here, she says, I would attempt to get into these accounts... So she at this point has been stalking him, she has compromised accounts that he has been using, and then she says our relationship was still very good at this point. We would talk about his aspirations like how he didn't want to be like other male VTubers. He wanted to go with a non-boyfriend experience, he didn't want to pander or sell out, he wanted a non-lewd say-so personality and really play into a mafia-esque character. And you see, this thing I can actually believe, again, because this guy has been in VR chat Coomer sessions for a lot, and any degenerate, it doesn't matter how degenerate you are, some, at the end, you're gonna get so, you're gonna get sour of that. I keep thinking he's Gen 2 for some reason due to no presence in his wave. And I remember being in the chat when Augustus freaked out. Oh, that's interesting. Few of them do, maybe like a few, a first few women generations. Vox hold my beer. So I can actually believe that Luca, at one point, when he got into Nichisan, she decided, I'm going to try and make it as a regular VTuber and not a Coom tuber. <laughs> That's funny. I, I like, I, uh, thank you, Monado6. Uh, a, a bird, I'm not sure if anybody heard that, but a bird just jumped across my roof and it sounded like it. They're probably going to start jumping on my roof now. Most things he was commissioning for his debut went without a hitch, but he would express frustrations. On certain things, there's commissioning an overlay and not liking it, that the person who was supposed to create his intro slash starting screen was ghosting him. He was bad at PowerPoints. And this is this is stuff that every VTuber complains about. Like Kirsha complains about this, Hexa complains about this, uh, Megumi complains about this. Um every VTuber that I have had a prolonged conversation with complains about stuff like this. There is nothing out of the ordinary here at all. It is perfectly normal. When dealing with commissioners and uh, artists and so on, you, you're you going to express frustrations at some point. That's perfectly normal. I stepped up and offered to do these things for him. He was my friend and he was frustrated and I wanted to help him the best I could, especially since his debut was very close at this point. And at this point, if you imagine her, her model, her VTuber model with like the men hair and knife, all our Proctor Chick links and info on the Discord from me just a minute ago. Okay, I will have a look now. Uh, okay. I did not take down the document. It has been reported and forced to go offline. While I wait for a review of it, here are other ways to access the document. A video from False ID. I'll just put this in chat, by the way, as well. Uh, so that other people who do who aren't on TVA or anything are able to, to look at this. So just give me one second. TBF, she only tried to get into the accounts to check her suspicion that those accounts are his. Okay, stalking by logging into sock pockets he was using to gaslight people. That's a stretch. Call it stalking when it's an actual personal account. Uh, if you say so. Again, I would be very upset if any person that I knew was trying to compromise any account that I used for any reason. Can I pin that? Replace pinned message. There we go. Also, I'm very sorry if I haven't been replying to anything, but I just realized I have not put on live chat. 
So it reset. I put it on live chat during the waiting room, but then when I went live, it went back to top chat as opposed to live chat. So if I've missed anybody's uh, comments that the algorithm has just decided they're a bit too spicy, I apologize. I'm, a, I'm in uh, live chat again. That's what she says now when she has every interest to frame it in a good light. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Like, if, if a woman were to say to me, hey, I tried to get into your accounts. I'm sorry. That's a red line. That's a red flag and a red line. I would be, I would seriously consider terminating my relationship with any person who said, hey, I tried to compromise your accounts for my own, because I thought you were doing things. Now, if they'd come to me and said, hey, I think that you're sock puppeting and that you're saying nasty things and you shouldn't do that, that's fine. They have every, if I was to do something that stupid and a close friend or a relative or somebody I was in a relationship with came to me and said, hey, I seriously, I'm not sure if you are, but if you are a sock puppeting, you're making a fool of yourself. This will be bad for your career. Stop doing it. That would be 100% a legitimate thing to do. And if I lied to that person and I said, no, that's not me. You're, you're off your head. Go away. Stop thinking this. I would be the asshole. No question about it. But when you cross the threshold into proactively trying to break into an account just to verify that somebody owns it, I think you've crossed a line. Now, maybe you disagree with me. I'm not saying that I'm right, but that is just my personal perspective. My perspective is that that is a red flag. I would never try and compromise somebody else's account just to say, just to get more evidence that it's them. All I'd say is, hey, I think this is a bit sus. If it's not you, I'm sorry, but if it is you, I think you're being a tool. Ugh. Despite all her... Being an awful Kuma groomer stuff, the amount of work she ended up doing for Luca, I still respect. Yeah, and I was about to say before somebody distracted me that this is where it becomes very kind of weird from her part. And this is where I say, I think that she became obsessed with Luca and that she is trying all of this that she did that when luca got into niji sanji what Raziel realized was that he was going to have access to managers he was going to have access to artists and commissioners that weren't her that she was in serious danger of losing her leverage and her relationship with him which was her legitimate prospect and so what she did was she tried to push herself as much into his life as possible. And the moment that he said, oh, I'm having trouble with this, I'm having trouble with that, she immediately stepped up and said, I'll do it for you. Because she wanted to stay in a relationship with him. That's my take on it. That's how I view it. How old is this woman? Uh, Mid-twenties, I believe. And here, look at this. Webby, so you need me to pretty up your PowerPoint stinger schedule outro. Am I missing anything? That's really about this, about it. And here, look, I feel kind of bad making you do so much. I need to really learn this stuff for myself. I mean, you popped the schedule thing on me out of the blue today, but it's fine. Yeah, sorry, video is good, though. And again, these screenshots taken out of isolation do not paint Raziel in a good light at all. Because here, Luca is saying, I feel bad making you do so much. But she's the one that offered. She's the one that said, hey, I'll step in and I'll do this. And he's being justifiably upset that she's doing this much. If he has any kind of dignity at all. I mean, if somebody, if Kirsha said to me, if I said, oh, I'd like to, I'd like to have a background for my stream or whatever. And Kirsha came to me and said, hey, I'll do it for you. I would insist on paying her. I would insist on saying, no, you you have a busy life already. Because remember, Raziel had her own streaming career and everything. She was streaming and doing all this stuff in her own life. And I would say, I, I would either say, I don't feel comfortable you doing that. Or I would say, okay, you can do it, but I know your time is valuable, so I will pay you for it. You know, maybe I, I'll pay you a little bit less or something because, you know, it's an informal kind of thing. But I'm going to pay you for it. I feel obligated to do that as a man, as a, as a creator who understands how important other creators' time is. 
also hi hello uh beer beard here beer bear beard uh, your name really trips me up paying for free labor i mean i i consider it very very i mean even if she even if she said no like offering to pay is the dignified thing to do <clears throat> shortly after luxium debuting luca would completely cut off contact with his friends he made before nichisanji he never voiced any issues with these friends before and would often hang out with them. To my understanding, when he talked later about friends treating him poorly, he was strictly referring to uh, a Gator. Luca and I would start to grow apart. He would often accuse me of expecting too much of him. All I would ask is if he wanted to play a game together, get in VR chat or watch something, comparing me to his abusive mother and would victimise himself if I did ask. He kept reassuring me that I could count, I could go back to him for anything, vent any time, and would even love bomb me often in the morning after he woke up. When I did ask to hang out or vent, he would get upset. Then I would feel make him, then would make me feel guilty and minimize my feelings because he could never do enough and he could never live up to my expectations. This got worse and worse as time went on. And this is where the gaslighting comes in. She later says they both sent gifts one to each other, so that it wasn't that one side that I. Yeah, I know. I, I am aware of that. I did. I did read ahead for that. <laughs> Oof! I'm super late. Don't worry, just a cannon. This will be a, a fun, a fairly, a fairly good vod, I would say, actually, because we've been, we've been fairly on topic for this. Oh. <clears throat> now I think this is where she is doing gaslighting, and I would be much more inclined to believe her words. If she was not so, if she had not so blatantly lied about the ERP stuff earlier, because right at the start of the document, she tries to paint herself as this innocent, lovely, darling creature who never did anything lewd or never did ERP sex or anything like that, despite being in a community of absolute degenerate coomers whose entire live stream persona was coomer bait stuff at the very least and degen VR sex parties. And now, she is saying that, I mean, as uh, the, as Limkin said, the smartest thing Luca did was to cut off all the previous Kumar friends. Yes, absolutely. This, this reads to me as Luca got a big break in Niji Sanji, and he wanted to go safe for work. And so he realized that he couldn't have connections with any of the degenerate coomers from the VR space. And that's why he cut contact with them when he got into Luxium. He stayed in contact with Raziel, or rather Raziel, <coughs> had already inserted herself into his life to the point where she was able to maintain contact with him. And because she was doing so much for him, he didn't have the the courage or the strength to cut her off like he cut off the rest of the people in vr chat and now she says all i would ask is if he wanted to play a game together get in vr chat or watch something now remember these people were coomers they had erp vr chat together i reframe this as her saying that she wanted to continue having vr chat erp with him and he didn't want to do that. That he at this point was trying to focus on S from for on safe for work content, <clears throat> and that he was trying to move away from his past as a as one of these degenerates, which I respect. I'm going to say it right now. Luca at this point, as he has been painted, seems to be a guy who has realised that he did stupid things in the past and is trying to get away from this. Yeah, Big Whale, get in VR chat has the same intonation as an ex saying, come on for old time's sake. Absolutely, absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. That is 100% the vibe that I'm getting for this, from this. <coughs> Proctor Man, have you seen the recent post about the doc? I'll drop it in the server either way. I, I'm not sure what recent post you mean. I don't think it's respectful more I ca more I can't make the most money this way Th that is also a, uh, like let me emphasize I don't think that Luca ha this is not Luca's baptism moment okay this is not the moment where he sticks his head above the Coomer waters and go I want to be a wholesome Christian lovey-dovey boy from now on I don't think so I still think that Luca is a weak person I think that he is a 
a kind of pathetic person. But I do think that I am willing to give Luca the benefit of the doubt in this incident, given who his accusers are. I'm willing to at least say that Luca wanted to make an earnest effort as a safe-for-work content creator. At this point, ERP VR chat would be a comp would be compromising material. His head above the coom, yeah. Also, I just realized that this really shows how, how good Starlink is. One second. Uh, the stream might, f might flutter for a second. One moment. Okay, am I still live? I think I am. Could I just really... Yeah, reconnection successful. Okay. Uh, I just realized I had my VPN on during all of this, and I'm amazed that I was still I was still stably streaming during this, so I just turned my VPN off. <clears throat> he seems immature too, for the most part. Yeah, yeah. He had had two second buffer, but you good. <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. I didn't even notice that was a very rookie mistake on this part. I do apologize if there have been, if there has been too much buffer um, from this stream because I didn't realize. This file looks suspicious. It is visible only to the owner. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm just looking at Discord. Uh, what uh, Mexifish posted was it was just I'll just I'll just put this up on on the screen for a second. <clears throat> oh crap! Sorry about that. Uh, I think this may be a first in Google Doc history. This does not dissuade me, however. Yep. Uh, this file looks suspicious. So basically, what's happened is a bunch of people have gone on to, <coughs> have gone on to. Oh dear, sorry, my throat's terrible. <clears throat> oh no, wait, I'm fine. Sorry, I just realised I'm not on the right screen. Sorry, something something weird happened. Uh, I accidentally showed something on screen, but then I realised that's not actually the screen that I was on. <laughs> so let me just put this on the actual on the actual thing. Phew, that was fortunate. I, 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 sorry. In case anybody was was worried why I said crap just then, I, I opened this on my regular. I've got two different um versions of my browser open, and I opened this on my regular browser, thinking that it was on the stream browser, and it accidentally showed my my disc my disc my not my Discord my um Twitter DM history. So I was worried for a second, but no, it didn't. It didn't actually show on screen. So we're fine. If we're fine. Yab avoided. <laughs> So uh, what's going on is that she's saying that a bunch of Niji sisters have mass reported the, the Google Drive document as containing spam or viruses. <laughs> Doing good things for bad reasons doesn't change the fact that things being done is good. Mm, I would more or less say now it's been a good connection most of the stream. I'm very impressed. Someone make a cheaters remake, but in VR chat he would make a killing. <laughs> I wonder, though, what would constitute redemption? I don't know. Again, I dislike all of these people. I have no interest in giving them anything, really. Uh, let me just go back to this. Okay. But yeah, I've commented on this, how this really comes across as, as something that Raziel doesn't, doesn't intend. There is a reframing here, a different perspective. And now we get on to... I think I've talked about the Ringfit Adventure, in, Adventure incident before. Oh, my poor throat. <clears throat> now, this does look like a really long document, but a lot of this is stuff that I have covered in previous streams, so I'm not going to go through everything. <laughs> Luca had two moderators at the time, including me. Luca streamed Ring Fit for the first time while I couldn't attend his stream. I rewatched parts of it and saw his chat, and knowing my best friend for years at this point, I asked him after if he was comfortable with what he was being said in chat. He told me he wasn't and that he didn't like being sexualized and just wanted to work out on stream while being entertaining. I took this as I should moderate this behavior in the chat room and steer people away from posting sexual comments. Luca would stream Bring Fit again, where I would be more active in moderating. Now, I'll just roll down for a little bit. Now, they, they, uh, there's no receipts just yet. Myself and the other mod had no channel rules at this time, so we had to do things at our own discretion. Going back to moderating for Java, his chat knew me well and I would joke around with them to try and softly steer con conversations in other directions as opposed to a more harsher moderation approach unless I absolutely had to. You should always be harsh with chat. So I did the same thing in Luca's second Ring Fit stream. This was taken in a wrong way. 
I didn't ban or time out people for using the hot sweating emoji face, emoji face, but I did encourage the use of another one when a user suggested it. I only timed people out for obvious sexual posts. I called out one user for accusing Luca of moaning on purpose and told them that he was breathing heavily because he was working out very hard. The stream went on without any issues until the very end when someone would super chat Luca asking why his moderators were banning people we weren't, and Luca would say that he would talk with us, his moderators. I ended up messaging him in a panic, letting him know that we did not ban anyone, only timed out. I talked to him after the stream, he would, he would craft the tweet and ask if he was okay to post that he trusts his moderators. I told him it should be okay and hopefully clear the air about this. I would sit on Twitter and apologise personally to people about what happened during the stream and explain the timeouts. Some took this as an attack, which led to both Luca and I being attacked. <coughs> Thank you, MerTV, for subscribing. Fent? What do you mean by that, Fent? Best friend, don't make novels worth of call-out documents on each other, precisely. I just can't take ring, ring Fit as a hard, serious workout. You don't do Ring Fit just for workout. It became meta for Coom sounds, precisely. The Ring Fit stuff is another huge self-report on her being obsessed with him. Precisely, Leonis. That's exactly what I'm going to what I'm going to say. I'm just going to finish reading this first. Doxed by having both our pictures plastered across various... This is... This is completely stupid because... Let's just let's just Google. Let's just go to Google right now. Actually, a Brave might show me different things. Raziel Warmonic images. Literally, the very first result for Raziel Warmonic is this: is her face. And look, these are other results. And this is Dirty Bomb on X. So this is like Dirty Bomb, fast-paced, team-based, free-to-play, the latest PC shooter from... So that's just a game. This is a game Twitter that she was partnered with. Look at this. This is her face on their official public um, Twitter um, social media. Sorry. Your cock scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I'm very sorry for, sh for showing my cock on this stream. So yeah, look at this. Look at look at all this. This uh, like most of these most of these Twitter search results have been kind of poisoned by uh, the recent controversy. But yeah, dirty bomb again. And this is her face. This is on their personal their public social media account. <laughs> Red flag. She has crazy eyes. <laughs> and like yep, yeah, there's there's here like again another picture another picture with uh, with Jordy Gamer Girl. So when she says, no, I've already seen that. That there it is. Some took this as an attack, which led to both Luca and I being attacked, doxxed by having our pictures plastered across social media sites. This is a complete and transparent lie. Because again, her face is public. Her face has been posted on multiple social media accounts before. This is an outright lie. She could work on herself a little bit and get someone IRL. Why is she like this? Yeah. And if you look at her, if you look at Raziel's public Twitter account, she posts her own face. She posts multiple selfies. Yeah, of course they doxed you, except they are yourself. <laughs> yeah, so this again is a complete lie. There is no getting around it. She directly lies here. This put a great strain on our friendship. I even asked to speak to his ma- Can I speak to your manager? Can I speak to your manager, sir? Sir, I would like to speak to your manager. If she allows these companies to post her, she shouldn't ever cry about doxing Lamau. Yeah, precisely. It's it's absurd. <laughs> but both Luca and his manager ignored me. Good. <laughs> That's exactly what Luca and his manager should have done. <laughs> Who was the other Argo last time? Uh, was it like Gamer? I'm not sure you're talking about uh, uh, Nigel. I mean, we couldn't say the same thing about half of Hololive, and yet, okay, she was, but she was distancing herself from her public persona for the sake of a cover story. She's so white. <laughs> Pardon me, sorry for sniffing. 
But yeah, again, this is an enormous self-report. This reads to me as she saw people, because again, Raziel has at this point done everything she can to stay involved in Luca's life after he attempted to sever contact with the people from his VR chat days. She has repeatedly asked him to get back into VR chat with her for, and as people say, that really comes across as an ex saying one more time, for, you know, let's do it for old time's sake. And now she is his stream moderator, and he is doing stuff that reminds her of stuff they used to do together. And she is getting very pissy at Fujoshi's in his comment section, going, whoa, so sexual, etc. And so she starts to time people out and she tries to distract people, because she doesn't like the fact that other women are expressing an interest in her boy. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> Because in the context of everything else, this is the only way that I can read it. And this is, I think, a breaking point when Luca actually realizes the crazy that he's dealing with. Because as you can see down here... I even asked to speak to his manager at Niji Sanji to better formulate a plan on how to best handle this, but both Luca and his manager ignored me. And again, this is a giant self-report. She is just saying... I don't like that people are saying sexual things about the man I consider my property. Therefore, I think it is time for me to speak to Luca's manager at Niji Sanji to stop him from having from letting women say lewd things about him in chat, because that triggers me. I mean, how else am I supposed to look at this? How else am I supposed to interpret this? BPD pussy got Luca acting unwise. This is the thing, Maniacal Foreigner. They had no physical relationship. This is all online. There is no evidence, as far as I'm aware, that these two people have even been in the same city, much less have been in the same room or the same bed together. She asked to speak to a manager and got DM'd by Illyra. Oh yeah, that's another thing. That's another thing. That's another thing. Oh. <clears throat> Going back to when Luxium debuted, Luca would complain and start comparing his numbers to his wave mates. He's number friending! He had always been obsessed with comparing himself to others and is always worried about his view count and how many people are talking in chat. I mean, again, she spins this in a very negative light, but again, but again, I, I don't think this is. I mean, he is in Niji Sanji, okay? He is in an awful lot of. Uh, was Silvervale history part of VR chat? I'm a, I don't know. I, I have no knowledge of what Silvervale does. I, I don't care about Silvervale at all. The clique is real. The number fixation is what drove him away from what he originally wanted to portray. He would be upset if I took notice of his new on-stream personality and overall content change. Luca would start to pander more, he would go Fujo bait with the other boys and started to shift towards a more boyfriend experience type of content. He would get frustrated and sad that I didn't watch his streams anymore, which was for numerous reasons. One was the content shift, the other was his time slot and was being and was quite late for me. I would occasionally watch his streams, but I couldn't even talk about them because I was it was like walking on eggshells. I couldn't joke about the things he did or say as he would get upset at me. Yet somehow all we would talk about was Niji Sanji and his streams. Again here. There are so many shirtless fan arts, I cannot retweet one because that'd be weird. Thinking about my voice tweet one hour ago being sexual makes me uncomfortable and I don't want that. He would get extremely frustrated slash uncomfortable by people sexualizing him early on, especially if they compared him to Vox Akuma. He would deny he was being sexual, this message is in reference to his voice tweet. He believed he deserved as much attention as his other wave mates were getting, namely Vox. He would constantly be on sites like 4chan and blame it on Selene, showing him... <laughs> and blame it on Selen showing him. He would ego search Twitter and tell me about it. He would show me fan art and clips people were making of him nonstop and what they were saying about him. He would message fans and lie about it to me directly until this one artist came out about it and told him he was being stupid for having casual conversations with his fans like that. He would use against the modeler's rules a password protected model of Luca in VR chat as if we ever if we ever did hang out in VR chat. He would go undercover in the Nichi Sanchi Express train world Selen made and eventually in the Luxium VR chat world to interact with fans and even reveal he was Luca in disguise. 
This is Luca lamenting that the Luca Kanashiro MMD model he downloaded was password protected and admitted he shouldn't be using it. And this, I don't agree with this context again. You don't understand I shouldn't even be using it because the company makes us one. It's not your model anyway. You can ask permission from that person. That might be in reference to what she's talking about. But I don't really believe it. All this makes me side with Luca compared to this this woman. Luca is just incredibly R-worded. This guy is an actual child. That 100% is on brand for Luca. Okay. Again, I, I, I am pl kind of playing devil's advocate for Luca simply because I do not like Raziel in any way, but I am perfectly willing to say, yeah, he was probably doing very stupid stuff as well. He does come across as very stupid. As someone who knows about what Raziel is talking about, this is on brand for Luca. I, I will, I will agree with you then. I, again, I have, this is my, this is just my perspective. And I think that the perspective that Luca is, a stupid person who did this stuff, I can believe. Silver Veil's time with VRC people was quite brief. When she started hanging out with Iron Mouse, most of the most of that ceased. I mean, Iron Mouse is physically dis is severely and physically disabled, so I can understand if if uh, Iron Mouse wasn't part of any of this lewd stuff. I just like both of them. I actually dropped you a message on Twitter. I will just have a look at my Twitter thing. Okay, I see what you mean. Oh, one pending request. Okay, interesting. Noticed you doing a thing involving Luca and wanted a bit more details about the circle situation. Luca, back in the day, used to engage in a trapping of people in VR chat. Specifically, the Rolf Guitar group, which is honestly quite the cesspool. More info you might like can be found here, including a bit of a time frame. Interesting. Except. Uh, do you, give me just one second, guys. Let me just look at this. Uh... To glance through it, to glance through. Oh. <laughs> I'll just pop this in in the chat as well. One nanosecond, please. Let find, I'm, my tabs are falling, falling to bits. VR chat legends. She wanted to join in with the degeneracy, but the iron lung kept her, kept her hands away from the goods. Ironic how the nicest VTubers are shut-ins. It's RP focused, but it's like, but it's, but still mention names and details, including Raziel. Mm. I don't think I can go over it right this instant, but I will. I immediately notice Twitch clips. Greek God X enjoyed his ERP with Java. Java Quirk as the most gay guy. Male Java introduces female Java. <laughs> oh dear. Let me just put this up on, on the regular thing. We've, we've been down on Raziel a bit too much. It's time to cringe at Luca for a little bit. You just faked his job. Alright. Listen, asking dude. Him to moan. How'd it go? Um. God man. fucking damn it, dude. What's wrong with that, man? Mate. Did you, say you, did you fuck him good? Mate, yeah, did he you was coming and I got. No, no I got he made chub. me come. Actually, <laughs> come over yeah, yeah, yeah. he, he gave me a chub. That's nice. See what I'm saying? It works, man. You want to do that again? That was pretty. Nice. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. We've got ten more just like him. That's fucking hot, dude. That's what I'm saying, man. It's how it. It's how, that's how it be. Java, high five, babe. Yeah, come here, dude. Yeah, man. Bam. Good. You're talented as fuck. Seriously. Oh, Soda, remember the five stages I told you? He's already on stage three. Soda. Soda, I'm jacking up my up to disrespect. I'm stage three. Yeah, I'm God damn it, dude. He knows it's a dude. He just said it. <sighs> it's all so tiresome. It's all so tiresome. That's 20. Wait. Is this? That's not. 
That's not who I think it is, is it? Sorry, I'm just looking at something. Uh... Can I have a beer? I don't even know if it's been 30 seconds yet. I'm looking for some ladies, you know? Yeah! I don't know why I don't think I have Okay, that's a lot. I've seen it all. I don't want to see Java anymore. Time's up. Alright. Is that, is that like Cottontail VA or something on, on like, uh, this part? I, like, I, I rec- I, I feel like that's Cottontail VA, but I can't, I can't tell. Remember when Silver Veil shit-talked Iron Mouse? Yeah, there's nothing more interesting than a gathering of 20-somethings talking about jacking off in a circle. Why do they all sound like bait? Like bait? Like bait. I I'm I'm not sure what, what what you mean by that. Let me just have a, another look at these. Uh, Java CBT. Java reveals voice from Moon Moon. Java and Raziel. Java spotted singing karaoke, comparing trap voices. Java and Sip. Java trapping soda pop in Hassan. Hassan Abi is impressed by. Guys, I need to take, I need to have, I need to go and have a, and, and have a piss. So I'm going to put this on and you're going to listen to it. It might actually loop. So can, can I send it to, to not, wait, uh, that's not the one that I wanted. Sorry, my, one second. I've, I've got the, no, that's not it. What, what, what's, what's wrong with my, oh, I see. Sorry. Sorry. I got, I got my tabs mixed up again. My apologies. So this is Hassan Arby. Yep, it goes deep. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go and take a piss while you guys watch this. I'll be right back. Really? You got lots of cocks on the hotline? Yeah, there's one here right now. Oh, nice. <laughs> that was a dude's voice. That's crazy. Man, man. Can you go back to the other one? But I think you wanted to fuck... Wait. That's how fucking good voice changers are? Okay, I'm sorry. There's no way I believe anyone uh, anymore in VR. Going forward, my assumption is that... Yeah, no, going forward, my assumption is that they're all dudes with voice changers. That's someone acting? That wasn't a voice changer either. It's a different person or someone good at voices. What the fuck? Wait, what the? Really? You got lots of cocks on the hotline? Yeah, there's one here right now. Oh, nice. <laughs> that was a dude's voice. That's crazy. He's a man. He's a man. Can you go back to the other one? <laughs> but I think you wanted to fuck. Wait. That's how fucking good voice changers are? Okay, I'm sorry. There's no way I believe anyone uh, anymore in VR. Going forward, my assumption is that... Yeah, no, going forward, my assumption is that they're all dudes with voice changers. Gentlemen, I have returned. This belongs. Don't let, don't let us alone with her son. <laughs> One moment. Allow me to update.
because I, I I want to I want to make it clear that this is how I feel af after after this. The VR rabbit hole is deep. I agree. Yeah, the voices aren't convincing at all. The only way he passes is if the toll booth is down. <laughs> The future of content creation is someone AFKing while watching someone AFK while watching someone watch us. <laughs> I just <sighs> So now we have now we have I thought that I thought the there were definitely other clips of it, but yeah, VR chat is something. You know, sometimes <clears throat> I think that radical Islam might have a point. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, sometimes I just feel that maybe. Maybe we really should go back to to the to the days when people could be killed for this kind of stuff. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> I clicked that and we'll post it on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather goon to underage boys in VR chat. <laughs> Dazzle, I'm not sure you want to be admitting to that kind of thing. Because, <laughs> yeah, when was this? When was this? Holy shit. Holy shit. When was this? Four years ago. Four years ago. Holy shit, guys. There is... There is a significant possibility that if the Luca was underage thing, Rat was true, that he was underage when he was doing this. Holy shit. Can you imagine, guys? I just let just let that sink in for a second. Just let that sink in for a second. How, guys, how, how absurd would it be if a son, if one day a son ends up getting cancelled because he had had ERP with with Luca with Luca Kanishiro from Nichi Sanchi when he was. Un when he was 17 years old. <laughs> oh my. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Are you. What, what is this timeline? What is this timeline? What is this timeline? What is this timeline? <laughs> Anything that gets VTV more attention is. What a. What a what a crossover! Please God that it happened, it would be so funny. <laughs> Niji X Hassan collab. I just can't. Mm. The clown world timeline. Boku no. <laughs> Uh, ugh. four years ago, he would have been 19 or late 18 at best IMO. Ugh. I'm sorry, I'm coughing, guys. But as as I said earlier, I do I do technically still have some form of, of nasal inflammation from my, or throat inflammation from my cold. Ugh. Seriously, though, is this the beginning of the end of Niji En's fall? Their reputation is in the mud and their company value is barely recoverable at this point. <sighs> Good riddance. <laughs> Hassan is current is currently is disappointing in his CCV dropping down to 13k he is considered he has considered suicide good good I don't even care I don't even care if that gets me like um like if if Hassan does a flip good zero sympathy 
should have happened sooner. Ah. Uh. What is going on? Uh, I, I'll, I'll get caught up in the Discord later. I, I have no idea what's going on there. I think it would still take Vox leaving and one more concrete internal drama to end them. Yeah, but yeah, a bit extra detail. These clips are usually from an event called Golden Gator, hosted by Rolf, Rolf Gator, and there is a lot of people in that cesspool. I agree. I, I really need to make some kind of thread on the Virtual Asylum, which is just tracking the connections between these people because i said earlier in the stream i have no idea uh mert mert tv how long you've been watching the stream but at the start of the stream i commented or near the start of the stream i commented that somebody on the virtual asylum uh, uh talked about a <clears throat> a person called marina vt who was involved in an awful lot of vr chat uh, shenanigans back during covid and I found it very interesting how they talked about uh, VR chat being the basis for an awful lot of VTuber meetups and how a lot of VTubers in the current scene were um, together. Start making conspiracy board for this stuff. I seriously might. I seriously might. Because a lot of this stuff I have been very vaguely peripherally aware of. But I've not been like, oh, I've been, my my mental has just been like, it can't be that bad. Okay. Okay. These guys, these guys fool around in VR chat at some point. That's fine. Okay. Okay. I don't like that. But I mean, the, the, the rabbit hole goes so deep. It's so deep. We literally have a Luca X Hassan gooning session. <laughs> like a creepy, weird session. <laughs> oh yeah. I heard about her. I wasn't as active in the VRC scene during the early part of COVID, but like, but still like aware of it. Mm. Uh. Oh. I will say Hassan has quite a nice shirt on during this clip. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna move away from this now because that is legitimately creeping me out to look at. Huh. And go back to this document because we're we're nearly halfway through. Uh, this is meaningless, really. Uh, Luca would antagonize 4chan after a hand can stream where he carved the jack o' lantern. The tweet would have random capitalized letters that would read "rent l free." I would express to Luca about how this wasn't safe. It's pretty meaningless overall. This is kind of gossipy. Uh, this would lead to Luca to pester him for updates. Upon receiving none, he would commission someone else. After he told Ike this, Ike would start to talk to him again and would allegedly accuse Luca of wasting his time. Ike apparently is another major VR chat uh, coomer, as far as people have already said. <laughs> Want another name that's affiliated that will get a laugh? Please go ahead. I'm very interested in all... Well, I'm, I'm tragically interested in this stuff. I shouldn't be, but I for some reason am. Like I have serious bile fascination about all this stuff. Yeah, Ike has as a lot of was a was a VR guy as well, <clears throat> and I think somebody posted a bunch of stuff about Ike in the Discord. I might make it the subject of another stream. And Ike also is has the Scarl and uh, there's no that was it was Aster and Scarl. Sorry. <clears throat> Shu would be the only other member to reply to him. Luca expressed frustration about how the other live has acted towards him. Sorry, I need to mute myself and cough for a second. Oh, well, uh, um, Mert, uh, Mertiv, uh, I, I already went over the Soda Poppin stuff, actually. Uh, Soda Poppin was mentioned at the start of this document. I, I brought up uh, Soda Poppin's VR Chat Legends page and commented on it about how he's Vibe's girl, uh, Vibe's girlfriend, Vibe's boyfriend now. Although, honestly, Vibe's girlfriend might be a better description. I also just think it's too old to give Hassan his, like, the time of day. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Hassan deserves no attention at all. I swear Ike is a background dancer in all of these yabs. He's not the focus, but he's there. Do you mean literally as he's in some of these clips, or do you just mean as in he's constantly mentioned? I'm not entirely sure. I really don't care about this kind of stuff. AR Live uh, AR Live would be cancelled and everyone in Luxium would go on strike except for Luca. Luca would express disdain for this and how his wave mates handled the situation, including slighting management on Twitter. 
Vox would try to organise meetings to bring grievances to management, such as their merch cut. There's the 2% meme. He would call his wave mates childish to me and expressed how he and Illyra would discuss the other livers' behaviours during this time. Now, Illyra is somebody, Illyra Pandora is someone who has been commented on quite extensively. The rat is that Illyra is Niji En management. And some of the tangential stuff in this document is somewhat verification of that Illyra is Niji Sanji management rat. Because uh, I think it was Todd who said earlier that Raziel said she had gotten a DM from Illyra, but she didn't realize that Illyra was management and so didn't respond to it. Metaphorically, but he very well could be a background dancer. My dad needs stuff from his shop. I'm losing it. And then I'm watching this and I'm losing it further. <laughs> Vi standards are catastrophic. <sighs> he would ignore my requests of not talking about Niji Sanji 24-7, but instead get me involved with his work doing things like building these nay land in Minecraft so he could spend time together. The fact that they can get away with having a D's, because one of the things that got Zion terminated, and something that uh, Nichi Sanji specifically called Zion out for, or Raziel is defeating the rat deliberately to damage Luca more, that is also possible. That is also an entirely possible uh, interpretation of this. How on earth is it that Luca could have Disneyland, but when Zion was terminated, Nichi Sanji came out and said explicitly, it was the D's nuts joke that one of the things they took they took offense at was her was Zion's use of the D's nut nuts joke. <laughs> like, how do you justify that when you have an entire event called the D's nay land? <laughs> Luca is the one who was using D's nets nuts the entire the most in entire Niji. Luca and Illyra discussing libraries is a massive red flag if she's in the position of pseudo-authority. I, I would agree with you as well. That's a good point. <clears throat> now, we're getting onto a bit more of a self-report territory. My work for Luca, I was paid in cash or gifts for everything I did for Luca except for mod work. I tried to make a civil contract with Luca later on as he wanted to pay me a monthly salary to more or less be his assistant, assistant and work on various projects with him, in which he denied the contract and wouldn't allow me to send invoices for the work. I would honestly say this is a smart move on Luca's part and I noticed that she does not provide the contract. Again, she needs to provide the contract for me to believe this because it would not shock me at all that she tried to put in weird clauses in the contract which said, oh, you have to go to me for certain things and so on. Because again, my my current rat or narrative of this is that Raziel really wanted to stay close to Luca at any cost. How is she paid cash if they don't meet IRL? I mean, I'm not sure, but... Someone in management had it out for Zion for sure. I, yep, that's definitely a good interpretation. Favoritism, that's how, yep. Uh, I would have to remind him monthly to pay me the amount he said he would, and he would send me the money via PayPal and label it as commissions or as my birthday. I would remind him monthly to pay me the amount he said he would. I mean, again, this sounds like a bad thing, but the thing is, streamers are really ADHD and are really, really bad at remembering things. So I don't see any reason why this would be a bad thing. Like, okay, it's not good that he had to be reminded to pay her, but at the same time, like, livers are very busy. So I don't think that would be wrong. I don't think that's necessarily a mark against him. Women hate women, that's why Zion got the axe. My source, it was revealed to me in a dream. I mean, it's literal truth. There's n There were no lies said in your statement, just there. <laughs> this is all just receipts. October, January, December, November, October. Why are these out of order? Look at them. This is January, this is December, then this is November, October, and September. Why are they out of order? Well, I mean, the, the, the January one isn't. Oh, September, October. Oh, I see. My apologies. They're reversed order. I thought this was January 2023 for a second. My apologies, that nothing there. I'm a fool. But just my just my dyslexia. Just my dyslexia. Myself and a fan from Luca's past life were his two mods. We had a private Discord set up for other mod activities. There has been no activity in it since I was modding for him. Why don't you release uh info info from there then? The other moderator and I had zero direction for his channel and we're completely left to judge things for ourselves. 
Something would come up like his chatters calling him daddy and would have to ask after the fact if he was okay or not with it and he often didn't give us a straight answer. Or he would say he was uncomfortable with something then go on to do it anyways. Basically standard indecisive male there. After the Ringford incident we both told him he couldn't avoid making rules any longer. We came up with a pretty standard VTuber chat room rules for him which he disliked. He decided to implement and added unclear wording to it by re rewriting all of them to include Twitch slang such as Pog as you can see here. Do not be weird champion that is super unpog. I despise Zoomers with all my heart and soul. Be respectful to one another. We only pog, we not, and not weird. I hate Zoomers with all my heart and soul. Do not back in unless I say so, and yes, that includes spoilers. After the Ringfit incident, we would also have to start explaining about every single time. I Again, this is something that I would expect from every mod. Like, if a mod bans somebody from this... If, if a mod banned somebody from my chat and I didn't see it, I would go to my Discord moderator, my, my Discord moderator channel, I'd say, Hey, uh, Reinigan, or Hey Thrang, why did you ban this guy? <laughs> so this is completely normal. There, there is no negative thing here. This is a completely standard thing that every moderator should do, in my opinion. Every moderator, to prevent things like nepotism or or angry moderators just banning people on a whim, it should be standard for a moderator to explain and cite exactly why they banned every person in a chat, okay? That should be normal. This is normal behavior. She's complaining about something that I consider completely standard and normal behavior. Banned for being cringe and unbased. <laughs> I would provide constant technical support for Luca. The example below shows me trying to help Luca stream a Chiller's art game, which had uncapped FPS. He would often ignore my help while, when he has technical issues on stream. He often gets angry. It's Twitch lingo. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, it's... I'm not going to go into it, actually. Luca never tests, downloads, or troubleshoots games or equipment until a couple of minutes before he streamed into issues. Again, he's a streamer. Most streamers don't do this. <laughs> Again, this is really silly. It's not turn. It's not turning on Sag. I'm clicking it, but it's not even turning on. It's not popping up. <laughs> Again, this is a standard idiot who doesn't know how the computers work. Whenever I stream games like this, it ruins my mode like 100%. Okay. I was credited for doing his intro video and some initial overlays when he debuted. I was also credited for project management for the Luxium VR chat theme park. I also had to gather a lot of the screenshots and information for his behind the scenes stream after his anniversary. Uh, I don't really care about all of this. Now, uncredited work. This is where it gets slightly interesting. While I did more than what is listed below, these are just the most standout moments. I was essentially his assistant, and with that came a lot of smaller projects for like making graphics for posting on Twitter and doing overlay stream thumbnails, getting popular game lists, making banners. Blah, 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 blah. Not only was this when he would give me his any color internal email address so I could log into his Minecraft account, I would end up making the majority of Luca's Disney theme park in Minecraft. This included, but is not limited to, the entrance to the carousel, the underground world, roller coaster, the decorations, pathways, the food stall, so our seating area, the Ferris wheel, the wall around Disneyland, the partridge and the pepper tree, etc. Uh, I'm sorry about the the weird way these screenshots are. It's because of this extension that uh, uh, dark that dark PDF extension. And this is the silliest part. Like he, but I mean, VTubers are not testing shit. Name a more iconic duo. I don't I don't think I see JP members have to f around so much with tech issues on stream though. Instead of network issues, it's because the Niji Sanji uh, Japanese people get objectively more support than the English side. We know this for a fact. Yep, we always post a, hey, I banned this guy, here's why in mod chat. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that, Ryan, and that's why I trust you as moderators, because I know you're not insane power-tripping people. Every time I've modded a Discord server, it was common sense to write down the reason for punishment. Exactly, Jackie. Exactly. That's a, that's a This is the biggest self-report of all. Imagine being so down bad for somebody, you build a gigantic Minecraft world for them in their place, secretly. Yep. Yep. This part smells mostly of her being pissy that she isn't taking credit. Yeah. Uh, this is the thing, is that, again, she is showing an obsessive level of commitment to this guy. Is that he, at this point... 
I don't know if they are, because again, I really do think they had ERP together. I really do think they got intimate in VR chat, full body VR chat, etc. I think they did that. But at the same time, I don't know at this point if it is still ongoing. But I do think that she is specifically trying to keep his attention on her. And she's trying to do that by doing things for him, by doing as many things for him as possible so that she is an irreplaceable part of his life, basically. That she's doing all the stuff that he can't himself. So that if he ever tries to pull away from her, she can just go, well, look, I do all these things for you. So if, I, if you leave me, you'll suddenly have no support. Anyway, was she married during this? The The marriage stuff was alleged, but I have not seen... I have not seen direct evidence that she was or still is married, okay? So that was alleged at one point, but I, I have not necessarily seen receipts for it being a fact. I still love the rat that Poma was so attached to Luca because it was actually Raz and her inner gay went off. <laughs> Uh, one second, I need to blow my nose. That wording makes it sound so creepy. Putting aside how she's trying to fame from him, from this, this is still him giving access to his account to someone else. Ugh. Do you have any idea how bad Zoomers are at operational security anyway? The, I can totally believe that he did this. I mean... I There are VTubers out there who have been either doxxed or had their information almost compromised because they have had passwords that are very easy to guess. Or they've had multiple different Twitter profiles or different, um, like, Facebook accounts that have just been their VTuber name, but one letter changed. So these people are very, very bad at understanding the concept of not lending out their stuff to other people. And I think it's very stupid. Teach me OPSEC. I must take care of it before becoming the tuber. I mean, there's literally... Go on TVA. Go on the... Uh... Yeah, go on the announcement page where it shows you where where it shows you the rules and everything. There's literally a thread on OPSEC linked in that uh, in that thread. That image is from her first call out. It checks out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And I'm sorry that it's all like uh, uh, color shifted, but that's just the extension I'm using for dark mode. Minecraft sports carnival that never happened. So she did this as well. I'm actually going to turn off. You know, actually, I'm not going to flashbang you, so I'll, I'll leave it off. But I mean, you, you can see, you can understand what it's talking about. Like, she made all of this stream overlays. I edited overlays for his stream. This, this but, that, but one went completely uncredited. It was the last minute overlay I did for his Pokemon stream seen below. Schedule graphic. At some point, and again, look at this. At some point, Luca would express multiple times that he didn't like his current schedule graphic. I asked what he was looking for and came up with a temporary one for him to use in which he didn't credit me for either while he found someone to commission. Before this, I was also responsible for editing and filling out the graphics for his schedules. I'm sorry if there's a weird noise in the background. I'm literally stimming. I even went out of my way to message artists to make sure it was okay to use their art in the graphics at the beginning. Old schedule edited. because no Okay. He expressed to her, this is another incident. She, he didn't ask her to do this. So far, all the times that Raziel has done stuff for Luca, Luca has either paid her or she was the one to offer to do it for him to begin with. We have a minimum of three times where she has offered to do things of her own free will for him. And notice that at no point in these Discord screenshots that she shares does she say, I'll do this for you for money. Because, you know, as an artist, as a content creator, as somebody who does a lot of stuff, she has every right to say, I will do this for you, but you have to pay me. 
And again, a decent person would automatically think, oh, this person is doing something for free, but their time is valuable. They are taking time away from... So they say, maybe he passively, aggressively mentioned I mean, that's also a possibility. It, again, it could be that Luca had this way... I got the impression that Luca would just bitch and whine and operate under learned helplessness until she stepped in because he knows she would do it if he cried hard enough. Yes, that is a perfectly valid interpretation. In fact, that is a good enough interpretation that I'm going to pin it so that people that people believe this, or that people understand that uh, that I believe this too. There we go. You've been you've been a very much an MVP during this stream, uh, Big Wheel. Thank you very much for your for your uh, contributions because it sums up an awful lot of thoughts that I'm just a bit too autistic to convey in simple language. But yes, the relationship to me is coming across that Luca is a very weak man. He is a weak person who has an awful lot of hang-ups because he's he has been abused by his parents which i believe because my god a lot of streamers happen like have this happen to them he's he's had a very bad relationship with his parents and he has had a very bad start in life and he has come into contact with all the people who give him the wrong impression that he was groomed in vr chat to think that it was normal and acceptable for young men to be this kind of weird hypersexual and this weird coomer nonsense. And then he comes into contact with Raziel, who is part of this circle. Again, I absolutely do not believe her under any circumstances when she said she was innocent in the VR chat stuff or that she kept VR chat st stuff safe for work. That is an absolute lie complete lie i think she was doing erp stuff i think she was and she was at the absolute bare minimum hanging out with people who were complete and total coomers so he has been exposed to very toxic influences his entire life and it's he bears considerable responsibility for not breaking away from it because again he has free will and he has decided purposefully to indulge in this learned helplessness behavior so I don't give him credit for this. I don't I don't want the people to think, oh, poor Luca, he's such an innocent victim in all this. No, Luca is as guilty as as Raziel in all of this. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, PP the Frog, or PP the Frog for, for joining the asylum. Uh, thank you very much. But I, I'm sorry, that actually caused me to lose my thought a tiny bit. But he has been indulged. He has had the mo he has had the worst associations in all of this. So I don't blame him for becoming messed up. I blame him for not doing more to avert it. Mister robbed Luca, needed most a caring Indonesian woman to fix him and convert him to the ways of Allah. <laughs> this goddamn sound. I like the sound. Uh, nobody's donated, but uh, the the donation sound is a bird is bird noises as well. Because I love birds. I really love birds. I really do love birds. I love me some birds, some sweet little adorable birds so that I can hold and cuddle and snuggle, and that are like I'm not I'm I'm not uh, that that. Uh, Ah, that's a whole tangent, but I like birds. I like birds. I like birds, and I like fluffy tails. Birds and fluffy tails are the two things that make life worth living. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, as, as Big said, uh, learned helplessness. Proctor likes his co- <laughs> Yep, it occurs to me, I've probably got plenty of viewers that have never seen my cock before, so I should really put my cock on screen sometime, you know, just to just to properly illustrate the kind of community that I have here. <clears throat> We're very free about with our cocks here. <laughs> so yeah, all schedule, etc. Uh... Let me just look up through here. New schedule. I would end up writing the law and video script for Luca's second outfit reveal. You can find the original documents for the law here, video script there. It was often hard to get feedback from Luca as it would take him days to get back to me. This stream's theme is for the birds. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Krieger. Or oh, Krieger, as the name is. Uh, thank you very much for the 1337. I appreciate that. <laughs> Just proposed the fox. 
I was personally very messed up in the past. I won't go into details, but I seriously regret all the weird shit I did. These kids don't seem too bothered or aware about their situation like that, though. Yeah. New friends, the streamer is making practical joke. Do not send tribute. <laughs> I mean, put it this way. There are far better streamers to send tributes to than me. Imagine Hustlers University VTuber. That would be hilarious. I don't know what Hustlers University is. Uh, what, am I, what am I being beeped for now? Broke. Oh. Thank you very much, Mexifish. Thank you. Just looking at the Discord again for a moment. I'm genuinely shocked that I'm a three viewer this time of the day. I was expecting... I, I was expect I would have been... Uh... Uh, Kieran Astraeus. Hi, Proctor. By the way, I watched your past streams. Thanks for the book recommendation. Bad therapy. Why the kids aren't growing up. I'm I'm very glad. I'm very glad. I like that. I I like that book an awful lot. And uh, if there is a uh, shall we say a a Jolly Roger version of it available in the Discord. If anyone would like to ping me and ask for a a Jolly Roger version of Bad Therapy, Why the Kids Aren't Growing Up, I will be more than happy to 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 give them a Jolly Roger of that book. Okay, because it's a very good book, and I I wholeheartedly uh, endorse pretty much anything that Abigail Schreier has ever written because she really seems to understand the concept of what's going wrong with children these days. And a very common sense, a very common sense attitude towards it all, which we we desperately need. Ah, uh, sorry, just one second. Allow me to to just screenshot something quickly. For for a personal reference. Just realized something. Uh, there we go. Thank you. Sorry about that. You must abhor the femboy, the unicorn, and the Fujoshi. Unless she's your Oshi, then it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Secure Bloom. I'm not going to pay much attention to this because this is mostly just a list of all the things that she did for him, which again is pretty... This is a, this is a really pathetic one. I was also tasked with handwriting his message and signature for his 2023 birthday merch. As far as I know, a staff member made the Lucas signature with the heart around it and he wanted me to trace it for him so that it looked like he did it again, but different, essentially. He never gave me a message to write, so I eventually had to come up with one myself. Handwritten note, 3.434 voice tracks, copy signature would make it a little different. Results. Okay. You weren't able to do this. This me The message was my fault. I should have written something for it. Okay, so let's have a look at the timeline. So that's 0218. 0219. I got done with four scenarios. One to three is build up of your birthday. Four is kind of like a bonus one. 0219. I learned it's hard to write with giant nails. Hope that's good enough. I can redo it if needed. Here is also a video from me, from Procreate, of me writing the message out. I wrote the handwritten message that was displayed on the Niji Sanji World Twitter account that presented Luca thanking his fans for 1 million subscribers on YouTube. That's 0220. 02-20-23. I joked about getting to 1 million subscribers when I first joined. I can't believe I achieved this thanks to you. Please continue to support me more in the future. Right. Here is a video from Procreate of me handwriting the message. Now, it sounds like that one time I asked by the company CEO to write me a letter of recommendation for a scholarship. He agreed to have me write my, uh, then had me write my letter of recommendation. Sisters actually cucked. That's hilarious. I, I'll say this is hilarious. That's really, really funny. I'm surprised that more people have not paid attention to this because... Uh, Luminous said, imagine knowing that your signature from your Oshi from his, is from his stalker groomer instead. Yeah, because remember Kiki, Kiki, was it Kiki Lockhart or Kiki Loveheart? That she was the, was she, uh, Einan Project? Yeah, she was Einan Project and she graduated, but she sold her gamer chair for something like several thousand dollars and somebody bought it and... And they, they, they said they took us, they, they bought it because they were a coomer, because Kiki Lockhart was a massive, massive coomer. 
And so a Coomer fan bought Kiki Lockhart's gamer chair. And then he huffed it, of course. And then he he said that he smelled male aftershave or, or male um like conditioner or whatever it is. Not aftershave, but like the stuff you put on your balls, basically. The stuff you the stuff you put on your balls to make them smell good. I recognize that smell, yeah. <laughs> and so he cl- he then said, This is her boyfriend's chair. <laughs> You know, one of the Niji Sanji EN members faked their own death. I do vaguely remember that, that it was one of those TF2 players, I think. Your merch is from the woman who is cucking you. <laughs> sniffer! Yes, give her the gold sniffer. The sniff test. T- <laughs> the literal Joe Biden sniff test on the chair. <laughs> Mail sent on chair, immersion ruined, ball glare. <laughs> that ma- that guy has big gay for knowing it. I mean, I think it was an Indonesian fan or something. So yeah, they're all pretty gay. Ah, uh, the blonde from the second wave with the awful eyes. I don't watch again. I don't watch Niji Sanji at all at this point. So I have no. I wouldn't even be able to recognize the Niji Sanji uh, characters. Sony Briscoe. That I. I that's a character in New Vegas called Sony Briscoe. I think. I mean, what strikes me here is, for one thing, Luca is a very pathetic person for not even wanting to write his own birth, his own like million subscriber fan message. But Raziel is a very sad woman for agreeing to do it. No woman should ever enable a man to this degree, because this is genuinely pretty immoral and unethical. Like these fans. I mean, I don't like Fujoshis, but still, when you have a brand that is built on women really liking you and being parasocial with you, if you enable those women, now I wouldn't enable them to begin with, but I would say it is then really callous and really unpleasant. Yeah, the sheer lack of respect for his own fans by not even committing a single paragraph to them precisely. It's it's dreadful. Maybe she got off to cucking hit the fans. That's actually not a good not a bad argument either. No man should ever enable a woman to that degree either. I mean it's like the learned helplessness thing. They were very this is why I said on Twitter they used and abused each other in various toxic ways. Because this is undeniably I, I hate the word toxic. I think the word toxic has been seriously abused in modern parlance. However, I do think that this is a a, a relationship where you can un unironically say these people were toxic with each other. Raziel is toxic towards Luca, and Luca is toxic towards her. And the fact that she continues to use the words like, we had a great friendship, or oh, I still like him, I don't I don't hate him or anything, that just speaks to something deeply and fundamentally wrong in the way these people view relationships. And that worries me. Hmm. Lots of birds outside my window, very nice to hear. I love being in the countryside and just listening to birds. Be able to open my window and listen to lots of bird song. It's really sweet. And this is some of the more spicy stuff, uh, the kind of big if true stuff. Although I think she did comment on this before. Yes, to my understanding, staff have three channels of communication with the Niji Sanji Livers. There'll be Flack, S- Flack, Slack, Microsoft Teams, and Discord. While it is rare, I would get screenshots of any internal messages. There were a couple of times I did. One would be about staff showing EN what 3D recording looked like for concerts with a video call. One would be upper management thanking Luca for his hard work through Slack. And the other, already shown above, was asking for a message from Luca for his 1 million subscriber milestone through Discord. To be honest, I bet everything on EN, if he had not succeeded, I would have been fired. So I am extremely grateful for your daily cooperation. I seriously wonder if this guy is still working at Niji Sanji. <laughs> Niji Fez was supposed to happen with Shu, Vox, and Mister getting a 3D spot. You can find the full conversation as Imgur Alchemy, including why Luca and Ike were excluded. I don't really care about that stuff, honestly. It's just Niji Fest is happening soon, and they're bringing all the girls and Mister, Vox, and Shu, but excluding me and Ike and everyone after us. Maybe because they knew you were so lazy. I'll go beat up Manager San for you. 
Now, this interaction, I think, very much highlights the, the toxic relationship here, because this isn't a woman that is in any way critiquing or saying, well, maybe you should think about what you did wrong and what you can do better next time, or let's plan for the future. No, she's enabling him. She's saying, I'll go beat up manager San for you. This comes across as like a toxic mother relationship. Mommy stuff, precisely. What I get from this so far, Nikon22, Luca is lazy, irresponsible, and a bad streamer. Raziel is arguably just as bad, if not worse, creepy, and a red flag. Oh, Raziel has so many red flags. I see Latino American girls going as, uh, are like, oh my, oh my god, I'm le toxic girl, like it's something cool, they have no idea what the word means. Uh, Guildmates Troy, they're young, desperate, and very unwise. Of course, they're making mistakes. It's just they're in a position to make mistakes on a grander scale than most. Yep, that's a very good, that's a very accurate summary. Yeah, Raziel really comes across as this, as a substitute mommy for uh, Luca at this point. Nietzsche doesn't even give 3D based on debut time. Luca is being entitled and not knowing how his company works. I mean, I can, I can agree with that, too. I mean, she should have just said that. She should have just said that. If she knew this much about the company, she should have just said that. You were so excited when you were talking about it a couple of months ago. It's effed up in multiple ways. I'm not surprised management handled it that, though. They always seem pretty disorganized, or at least new or young to it. This is true. This is one of the most real and true things she said. I don't think it's petty, though. I'd be pretty upset, too. That's really effed up. I, it's always awful hearing shit with second hand. Luke CM along with other units were to Japan in December 2020, 2022 to record songs. There, would be, there was no 3D recorded for this event that I'm aware of. The livers were told the event was not cancelled at the time but rather postponed. The only information they were given was the same but public re the public received which was that it was postponed due to COVID-19 related issues. In the below screenshots, we can see Luca admitting that while in talks with management, they were not used to the livers talking back to them, which caused one of the staff, the members of staff, to allegedly start crying. Oh, I'm sorry, oh my god, we're literally arguing with staff about our one year. No, like, it's bad. We're talking to a vice president. The producer is a big, is a big NFT guy. ha ha ha! We will literally get cancelled if we proceed with this like a big NFT guy. <laughs> the guy making the song is an NFT guy. You're just confusing me. Eyes on the song means eyes on the producer and people are retarded. So they'll start making it seem like we support it. Honestly, I don't think NFTs are bad, but Poppy Playtime did get effed over. I, I, I don't understand what that means. They are that bad. They really are. So... <laughs> The people at the company are getting mad because of it, though they are very conflicted because they already have the song, but but we don't want to sing it because NFT and this shit doesn't sound like a one-year anniversary song. It's more like a K-pop rap again with, like, Noctux. A Noctux? Yeah, Noctux. Just fire Chibi Nyan, holy shit, his songs are trash, or whatever his dumbass name is. Yeah, one of the managers are, cry are crying because it's a little scary to give the harsh feedback we are giving right now, because the guy obviously controls a lot. JP work culture is obviously different, so they are not used to Lyra's talking back. Now, the funny thing is, I completely agree with this entire conversation, actually. This is the most real conversation of this entire archive so far. This conversation about music specifically, because all of this completely tracks with everything we have heard about Niji Sanji before. We have heard that Niji Sanji had India managers, and that when, or was it India or Korea? I'm not quite sure. She was so real for the Chibian comment, actually. Yeah, that's why I say this feels very real. Sorry, I'm sloshing my water about a bit. That we know that it was either India or KR management that was rolled into Nichi Sanji English management when those branches collapsed. We also know that at the start, Nichi Sanji EN management was pretty good by the by the descriptions of the livers. But then a whole bunch of guys left that management to pursue an NFT project. And I'm seriously wondering if there's a connection here. The NFT checks out with the Grat, funnily enough. 
I mean, I kind of buy the crying part. Japan has a secret don't criticize rule. You can see it even in their TV. Yeah, I can agree. And this is pro and uh, Big Wheel, this is probably more of a realistic insight to their normal conversations between the spikes of Menhera. And yeah, it seems like she filled the role of being a non-work related mate he could confide in. Hmm. Which I find it, you know, all the more nasty that she decided to drop all this on him or on, on Twitter and so forth. Oh dear. <sighs> but you see, the thing is, what I'm getting out of it is that if you look back at the kind of women that have that have tried out for Niji Sanji, that are in Niji Sanji, most of the women who are part of Niji Sanji are fairly demure women. They tend to be fairly self-isolating. They tend to be, a lot of them are Chinese or Chinese descent, or they are from cultures with very strong generational rules of respect your elders, do what older people say, and so on. Or they are of the, the, the kind of personal personality persuasion where they don't question authority, They're, they feel as if they are nothing without the company. Whereas it seems as if the males in Niji Sanji are much more willing to go, this is not acceptable, you will give us better stuff. And I can't help but, because I have had people, what's interesting, uh, I, I, will, I will say this, I have had people who are in a position to say accurate things about Niji Sanji, say that Niji Sanji's work culture is much more open than many other companies. They say that Niji Sanji is very much a do-it-yourself kind of company. And in their opinion, or what they have implied, is that an awful lot of Niji Sanji livers choose to not rock the boat. And so they kind of get shafted because they don't stand on their positions. And so they don't end up getting the things they want. They are much more likely to simply go, oh, woe is me, I'm not getting attention, I'm going to sulk in a corner. Luminous. This is the guys get more promotions than women because they are more proactive. And yes, that is a good way to describe it. I feel as if the males in Niji Sanji get much more attention and much more resources because they are much more willing to sit down with management and go, guys, I am sick and tired of being pissed about. You are going to give me what I want. And saying it in such a way that management can't just say, um, well, you know, this is in violation of uh, paragraph 394, subsection 5 of our contract. So uh, actually, no, we are not obligated to do this. And uh, you will sit down and you will stop saying things. Otherwise, we will put you on, on suspension and have you tweet out that you are in hospital or that you are on holiday. Uh, I would see a man being much more willing to go, uh, yeah, I'm not playing ball, I, you either give me this or I graduate, or you give me this or I don't do this for you. I mean, even if it's more open, it's still a Japanese company, they have freedom but with limits, so there are still restrictions. I'm not saying that it is an unrestricted company. What I'm saying is that there is, there is this concept that Niji Sanji is an incredibly strict and rough and harsh company, but other people who I trust to be able to say this have told me that it's more open, that it's more, that the, the attitude of people saying that it's a restrictive company are the kind of people who would naturally not take advantage of openness if it was presented to them. Women with dicks and weak men with vaginas, so delicate like mommy's fine china, if you have complaints, please wait your turn and line up. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, again, I cannot say for certain if this is true, but it this actually does align with what I am aware of. It's very interesting to see disparate pieces of information that I have access to. You will listen to my out of touch boomer talk take about talk about culture you thrive in, which I don't understand. <laughs> this has been one hell of a ride. I agree, and the ride never ends. I mean, just look at the thumbnail. <clears throat> We're not too far down. Uh, let me just glance, because I actually have not really looked at this myself. I'm going to have a drink. The CEO of Any Color taking Luxium out for a private dinner. 
this is so this is actually honestly this is actually really cute this is this is genuinely the cutest that luca has been Look at him, he's gushing over this. The place was too fancy. It's one of those Japanese houses where I had to take my shoes off. I was escorted by people in kimonos, and we had to sit sit like on our legs, like in anime. Size pose, I think. Then it was just upper management, these millionaires and billionaires. But I've had dinner with a billionaire! I swear this guy, the CEO, just rocked up on a hoodie lol. And Raziel goes, he's only a billionaire because of you. Yeah, that happens a lot. He's still a kid too. This is creepy. This is real. She talks about love bombing. She accuses. Notice. Notice here. She accuses Luca of love bombing her repeatedly earlier in the document. And yet here, she's saying this guy is only a billionaire because of you, and he's still a kid. To me, this speaks of something completely different. Proctor, leave the VOD up, I'm going to bed. I'm not going to take the VOD down, I've never taken a single VOD down. And there's... Uh, have I ever taken a VOD down? No, I haven't. Like, the VOD is definitely still going to be up. Is it bad? I feel kind of jealous about their relationship. Yeah, you shouldn't. You sh absolutely should not feel jealous about this relationship. Good grief. I think I have issue... No, uh, sorry. I'm s you're so lucky. I'm so proud of you. We were just doing our interviews in our room and we finally get to see the guy in person. You're his little pay piggies. Hopefully not empty words and promises. Like, you're kind of their lifeblood. <coughs> like I said, hopefully he means it. It's not lip service. Sorry to be so jaded, but I've and a lot of people I know have been burnt by statements like that. Of course there are limits, but I really hope they do mean they'll do their best to support you because so far it's been lackluster. Luck I can't wait to hear more about it. It sounds enchanting and like a once in a lifetime experience. I'm so happy for you. <clears throat> like this, there is a little bit of creepiness here, but honestly, Raziel would probably groom Riku if she had the chance. Probably, almost certainly. Kid too. Oh yeah, I didn't notice the first on the first read to the accident, the accidental slip there. She's into Cherry Boys. Take a walk, lad. Clear your head. Soon, soon. We're nearly done. Yeah, they're both autistic. Autism has a tendency to love bomb. I, uh, I agree. I feel... As an autistic person, I actually do my best not to love bomb because something that I really despise is, is insincerity. I hate insincerity and I really hate the, the structure of formal, normal society where people are taught to say things... Like, if somebody comes up to you, maybe even... Maybe an acquaintance, and they say, I had a really terrible day, or oh, my, my parents died, or something. <clears throat> Your instinct is to say, oh no, that's terrible, that's awful, that's dreadful. But in my opinion, you really shouldn't say that unless you can really empathize with the other person. I find it really disingenuous when people say that. If, if somebody said that to me, I would be like, can I help you with that? Is there anything that I can help you? with that that like, i try and be as empathetic as possible i mean i have i have i have seen i i, tr I think that i am a fairly empathetic person i, I cry an awful I, it's maybe it's maybe this sounds this doesn't sound particularly masculine but i cry an awful lot when i see very nasty things happen to people uh, there are some things that i very much avoid because i find it far too easy for it to prey on my emotions and if somebody were to come to me with a bad story, I would that would trouble me a great deal. But I feel you shouldn't say things like, I love you, or I adore you, or that's wonderful, or, or I feel so happy for you, unless you can seriously back that up with your, with your actions and your deeds. And I often come across as kind of harsh or cold with people, especially over text online, because I don't do that. I don't say I don't say things that I feel are not sincere to say. When I am sincere, then I can be very effusive. I can be very uh, and I don't like to say things, oh I oh I feel sorry for you. I, I try and be very detailed. I try and I try and be specific to say I feel this 
I feel this specific emotion in response to the way that you... To, because this reminds me of something, or that I feel like I can relate to this because of this reason. I try... I do that autistic thing where I, I, I explain things a bit much, and I understand if some people don't like that, but I feel that it's my duty to make it very clear what my emotional response to something is. Because if I don't do that, then the other person might develop a feeling towards me that is based on something that I don't actually feel towards them. Maniacal Foreigner, I was always told to act happy no matter how I felt because that's what people expect you have to fit in. My parents would always be pissed at me for being honest with my emotions around others. Yeah, I, I, I don't agree with that stance at all. I think that emotional honesty is something that society desperately needs more of. And I try and be emotionally honest with people. I really do. And, and that has led me to lose some friends because they've said, I can't stand how you're, how you're being... How you're being so so direct with me. I, I can't stand it when you're so direct. But to me, I'm like, I'm sorry, this is the way I am. This is the way I feel. I, I don't want to lie to you and say that I, I feel something that I don't. I would rather lose a friend over them realizing that I don't feel the same way about things that they need me to feel like in order to stay as my friend than, than to have that friendship remain on false pretenses. That kind of thing is very important to me. Uh, Riku is 28 this year, he hence the kid snipe. Yeah, that, that, thank you for that, uh, uh, Real or, or Korai. Kind of feel worried for myself now, honestly. Like, do I love Bomb? I, I don't really, I don't really know. I mean, I don't know you, so I, I can't, I can't give an, give an analysis of it. Pretty principled, honestly. I mean. I was raised by prince by a principled family. Being honest, even if it makes you lose friends, it's better that way. Just being yourself will lead to less pain down the line. I agree. Just give me one second, please. I need to buy more cherries. Oh, this top wasn't doesn't want to come off. I need to take a sip of this. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> it started to harden. Oh, it started to crystallize. These cherries have started to crystallize. It's probably because of the heat. Mm. Oh, they're still good, though. Mm. Oh, yep. Oh, sorry, I just knocked my lamp. Ah. Now that's just me talking to myself, the love bombing shit. Mm, okay. I mean, there's no... People should self-reflect. They absolutely should self self. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. Why am I babbling all of a sudden? People should self-reflect. There we go. But people also should know how to break out of their own logical loops. And this is why I am so immensely grateful for having the amount of socialization that I do. I'm very grateful for being raised in a Christian household that has strong ties with a local church group. Because I was raised among various people and I was encouraged to talk to them and express myself to them in, with a lot of friendship. And I knew they were morally sincere. I knew these were good people so I could open up to them. And there was a free interchange of ideas. And what I see happen very frequently with young people today is they have no outlet with which to be emotionally sincere and honest with other people. And so they are unable to properly self-reflect because self-reflection is incredibly important for your personality. But the trouble is, you are your own worst enemy. Because as much as you self-reflect, you are also very good at convincing yourself that certain bad or negative or stupid behaviours are actually good inside your own head. You can only self-reflect efficiently when you have a circle of friends who you are able to speak to honestly and bounce ideas off of and get words out of your own head and speak them and see them reflected back at you so you can understand the nuances and adjust. <clears throat> 
I'd say that's completely essential to have any sort of functional functional role in society. No one realizes how valuable that is until after the fact. Mm, that's that's a tragic reality. That's a tragic truth. It's one thing to be emotionally honest, but IME autistic people are the first to flip when someone tells them something true but tactless. I mean, again, that's when self-reflection comes in because I uh, that's something that, that was just spoken in the Discord. I have a problem with criticism. And I'll be honest about that. If somebody says, I don't like what you're doing, I immediately feel angry. I feel upset. It hurts me. It really does. But what self-reflection has enabled me to do is the moment I feel that sensation within me, that, that little voice in the back of my head, that little autistic voice that says, how dare this person critique me? How dare they say this thing about me? They don't know what I'm like. They know nothing about me. How dare they say it? This is all, this is ridiculous. I'm right. I'm always correct. Because that, that voice is, the, is in the head of most autistic people, I would say, because we seek concrete reality. Because autistic people hate feeling out of control. That's why they hate change, because change means they're not in control. But when I feel that voice inside my head, that little autistic voice that rebels against the idea of change, that rebels against the idea of personal self-adjustment, of changing, I just think to myself, my objective experiences say that I will benefit if I shut up and think about this person's advice. If I analyse whether this person has a point or not. And usually, after about five or ten minutes, I go, you know what, those people had a point. This is something that I should work on. This is something that I should think about more. And I try and remember that and take that forwards. Hey Proctor, I feel you give lots of good advice about being good members of society to people like us who can't or don't want to be part of society, so it's kind of lost on us. I mean, that's the trouble. Being part of society these days means accepting all of the nonsense that comes with society. Autistic people get hyper-focused on the principles. Normies who agree with the principle and ignore the social context get swept up. And then it's just an autistic flood that leads to cancel culture. And also uh, above that, autism online needs to be looked into way more than it currently is. Hyperfixation plus lack of social cues slash outrage in the same space as normies is a bad combination. That, that, again, once again, are you, a, are you a therapist, Big Whale? Are you a therapist? I'm serious. Are you a therapist or do you have a background in psychology? Because it feels like you're very, very good at just nailing these ideas. Shut-ins unite. <laughs> Again, I am so, I am just so delighted and I'm so grateful that when I turn off the computer, I can go outside and I can be part of a small, relatively isolated, high-trust society with very strong moral principles. Because... That's a society I feel happy to be part of, and I feel it's what allows me to tamp down on the autistic, hyper-focused parts of my brain that want to reject society and normality. Because if you look at people like Luca and Raziel and their kind of individual, they're probably autistic too. They probably, I mean, I, I, I sincerely believe you cannot be an online personality without at least one mental illness. These people don't have what I have. They don't have a strong moral foundation. They don't have people they can talk to in real life who are confidants. They don't have access to a high trust society where they can reflect and they can see their ideas reflected back at them and draw valid feedback. These are people who are part of a society that has failed them. They are broken products of a broken society. And when people like Brain Doko say people like us can't or don't want to be part of society, I feel that what they're actually saying, if you don't mind me putting words in, your, in their mouths, is that they don't want to be part of the society that we have today. 
And I completely agree with that. I completely understand. Mm. No, no, I think the VR chat role players are very normal and well adjusted people, actually. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, I I'm glad somebody thinks that. <laughs> Broken societies like China or America, both South and North continents. Yeah. And this is why I think that the small town lifestyle or the, the village lifestyle, in not village as in a literal physical village necessarily, but the, the village mindset is what people need to have more of. I don't agree with the idea of grand sweeping societal solutions because to me that's inherently Marxist. That is saying, go to the top and work your way down and impose upon people standards. And it works in both ways. Like, it's standards from both the left and the right. And I'll try not to put this is but this is like just my opinion. My, just my opinion, bro. I feel the change starts at the individual. And so long as you are imposing standards that people do not have a sincere personal commitment to, then those people will never progress you will you will always be dictating to them and the moment your dictatorial attitudes are gone then they will revert to being exactly who they used to be and you're never going to get anywhere you have to teach people how to be good on a personal one-to-one -one scale and let me tell you that is exhausting it is one of the most exhausting and tiring mentally and physical physically activities this is why psychologists and therapists have such massive rates of depression and burnout because it is completely exhausting to go one on one with a person who you know their life could be improved if they just did a few simple things to improve their lives and you have to go through a thousand hoops to explain to them, to convince them that they should do these very simple things to change their lives for the better. <laughs> I would be more inclined to get to know my neighbours if not for the fact 80% of them have turned out to be drug dealers. Yeah, I mean, you highlight the point exactly. You highlight the point exactly, Vale, that far too many people simply do not have the opportunity to build a small-scale society of good people because they are trapped in circumstances where they are surrounded by moral and physical degenerates. And it's exhausting. It's exhausting to have to deal with. I am exhausted by it, and again, I deal with good people. But even so, even so, I am exhausted by it. Even in the limited amount of degree that I try and help people to improve their lives, it is still incredibly tiresome. Because it's, it's as, I, I think it was Seneca who said that mankind would rather change the gods than change themselves. And his point was that men would rather go to the absolute extremity of activities to avoid doing, to, to avoid changing their internal habits and attitudes. It's all, it's all a matter of perspective. Some would love to be in your place. <laughs> Anyway, that's my that's my philosophical comment. That's my philosophical ramble for the stream. Uh, I actually have not gotten to this point before, so it's eighteen seventeen. I think we've been we just passed three hours, have we, or is it two hours? Three. So we're nearly for. I'll I'll see, I'll see about going on. I'm not sure if I've got four hours in me because I'm out of water and I'll need lube a little bit later on for my for my throat. That is. <clears throat> I realise I should not have said that. That was a stupid thing to say. Dear me, why did I say lube? Why did I say lube? <laughs> Ending our friendship. Luca would become too much for my mental health and I told him I needed to break away from our friendship. I blocked him on Discord after I said I needed some breathing room. I let him know if there was an emergency it was okay to call and text me. After a week or so, I found out that allegedly people were making him uncomfortable and he started to fall asleep on other Nichi Sanji Liver streams, something he had never done before. I texted him if he was okay. Real name, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Why is that? Nothing. It's fine. I'm sorry. I should be honest with you, especially with a question like that. I just read that some people were making you uncomfortable and your sleep has been horrible. Falling asleep on streams. That's nothing weird. Enough to check in. I know you, but if you're good, then... 
I asked Luca to talk, and that's when he informed me he was going to London to meet with other Niji Sanji livers. <clears throat> I simply asked, asked if, if that he be safe and just messaged me that he was that he was when he could. Ah, I see that weird phrasing there. He would end up calling, messaging, snapchatting me from time to time to talk about the food he ate, shopping they did and such. He did admit he did admit he did not kiss Vox when they were playing the Pocky game and they just pretended for stream. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> On his way back from London, I informed him of a celebration stream I was having. He would be really happy if he could just say hi, in which he said he would be there and he ended up not showing up. And then she says, slowly our friendship grew more and more toxic after this. Surrogate mother, basically. Hmm. Hmm. US society tends to end about 50 miles from the political boundaries of the major cities. It's part of why things are so dysfunctional there. Hmm. I agree. But again, once more, this is another red flag kind of thing. So here... She says, Luca would become too much for my mental health, and I told him I needed to take a break away from our friendship. I blocked him on Discord after I said I needed some breathing room. I let him know if there was an emergency, it was okay to call slash text me. So this is weird. Why would you block him on Discord but not call slash text? Why would you block him at all? You could just mute him. Just mute him on Discord. So you don't see the messages. That's strange behaviour to begin with. And then, after she says, I needed a break from the relationship, I found out that allegedly people were making him uncomfortable and he started to fall asleep on each other's Niji Sanji live streams. And then she texts him about this. And then he gives him this really long text and says, well, for a text message, I started to get worried. So she has said up here, I needed a break from my mental health. And yet afterwards, she immediately says that she was checking up on him. Like, how did she know this? If she was taking a break for the sake of her mental health, how on earth did she hear that allegedly people were making him uncomfortable? Like, that's personal, intimate information. So she would have had to be talking to people who were still close friends with Luca if not proactively looking at his socials or uh, sorry <coughs> or uh, looking at his personal discord or whatever so the, so far the most damage done by this was to the weird fans who wanted fujo stuff and the fans cut with a love letter <laughs> but yeah she she says that she dipped for her mental health but then she goes straight back in again okay I I don't know what to think of this. And then down here, so again, she said that Luca would become too much for my mental health. So she is implying it's just such a cope statement, I agree. Maybe red text drama thumbnails were going around. That's possible. That is possible. And here, this reference, every time Every time she says, oh, Luca was toxic and parasocial towards me. Uh, okay, maybe he was. But then less than a par every time, a paragraph later. Uh, usually a paragraph later, she's an unwell person chasing the dopamine dragon. I agree. Then she says something like about how she was parasocial towards him. On his way back from London, I informed him of the celebration stream. So she was, so she wanted him to show up to her stream. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Raziel, probably, yeah. This makes no sense. Why on earth, if you're taking a break for your mental health, why on earth would you want the person you are deliberately taking a break, a break from, to? show up on your stream. Why would this mean so much from you? You're on break. Again, the framing is just terrible in all this. She makes herself look worse by saying this. Slowly, our friendship grew more and more toxic. He would tell more lies. He would get short, frustrated, etc. Hey, short. I would have to comfort him more often than not, and I felt stuck due to the way he acted when I left him alone. He continued to love bomb me. 
Again, show receipts. When is he love bombing you? You have provided zero evidence of him love bombing you. But meanwhile, pretty much all your, your conversations with him means that show that you were there to reassure and baby him and act as a surrogate mother to him at all times. Woman logic. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very big woman moment. I would get extremely hurt, upset, frustrated, and angry in return. He would continue to victimize himself when he lied or broke promises. He would once again blame himself for not being enough. It shattered my heart when I had to tell him he was enough and reassure him while constantly being tossed aside and mentally abused. So why did you do it? He would threaten to not be my friend anymore, that he couldn't handle me if I didn't change or leave him alone. So why did you stay with him? Again, this flies in the face of everything you have said before. She has spent the last 40 or so pages saying how Luca was parasocial towards her, how Luca kept dragging her into things. And now she, yeah, as Doko Brain said, it's probably sexual and she's taken the moral high ground. Like this completely, she has every reason to stop talking to him at this point, to break away. If, if, if she was the victim, then this was the perfect time to break away. But this just sounds like Luca is fed up with her and is sick of her. And like, he's decided, you know what? I don't care about this woman any longer. So I'm just not going to care about trying to keep her happy any longer. Which again, is a bit of a bitch move on Luca's part, but it reframes this entire narrative in a way that is not favorable towards Raziel at all. Uh, he would still bring up that I didn't watch his streams, that I wouldn't couldn't be proud of him if I didn't. The, these, this is this is this is so Freudian, Freud, Freud, Freud. This is so Freudian. Like it may be too soon to say it, but in all honesty, I think that she is lying. I don't necessarily think that she is outright lying. I think she is maliciously reframing things that took place to be more favorable to her. He would start to buy me gifts such as Lego sp sets to replace spending time with me. I would also send him gifts back such as snacks on the US or expensive clothes. What time we did spend together at this point was him sleeping on call, watching anime or talking about his next project. He never credited me for projects anymore. Blah, 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 blah. I was becoming a ghost and it was happening very fast. For me, it's like a weird back and forth toxic relationship. Uh, Luna Valkyrie. You feel like you've invested a lot into a friendship and think pauses or breaks can save it, but they don't not saying she's right. Thank you very much, Luna Valkyrie, for subscribing, by the way. It's dumb, but some people get that way in friendships. Thank you also, Jack Titor, for the, for the crowing. <laughs> I hope nobody was falling asleep to my, my soft ASMR tones. Lego sets. <sighs> he would start to buy me gifts such as like Chris Chan flash flashbacks. Oh, dear. Huh? 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 Oh no, I've run out of water. Uh, and I agree with Beeg. If this is true, where are the screenshots that she is clearly not reluctant to use? The goddamn alert. I love the alert. <laughs> Although I will turn my, my desktop audio down a little bit. The crow spooked me, lol. <laughs> uh, that's actually, that's that's one of my roosters crowing, by the way. Uh, he would still bring up that I didn't watch his streams and that I couldn't be proud of him if I didn't. I reassured him multiple times that I was still proud of him throughout this, all the while doing work for him. He would start to buy me gifts. Oh, give me one second, guys. Give me one second before we... I feel it's only fair... It is only fair that I do this. Open image in new tab. Save image image as. Now let me go back to just chatting for a second. I'm cooking something up. I'll be a moment. I'll be a moment. Because I think that this is. It is very important to do this. You will. You will understand when I when I show it. Uh, image. Make source visible. Desktop. Okay, that's a bit large. Allow me to resize it. Uh, 
There we go. I think that's. I, I think it is very important to to have uh, Doctor Freud. Actually, I'll put him over here. He can be my co-pilot for this. Like uh, Doctor Freud could be my co-pilot for this section of the of the stream. In fact, let me just put him down there. So he's literally sitting on my head. Like Doctor Freud is on my head right now. <laughs> He didn't look up Kirsha Rule 34. I don't look up uh, porn of characters that I actually like. Always remember that what you're hearing is a bird song. Chickens are related fowl. It's just that unfortunate. <laughs> I've got to go, but I will say the last couple of things she mentioned in this doc are the only things of any substance of bad doings in EG, but she brushed over it. It shows no, no moral impetus for this doc. I agree. Yep, I, I, I kind of browsed at the bottom. Give me one second. I have no... I have no more water, but I just need to have some syrup from these cherries, which uh, will will help to to wet my throat. Ah, uh. oh, that tastes good. So does that mean you look up R34 characters you don't like? Uh, no, I don't consume I don't consume porn. There's a reason I'm not in any of uh, Kirsha's Jijen channels. Hmm. As Kirsha would say, women are women prefer it if you've got an imagination. <laughs> Sorry, I needed that. I needed those cherries. Mm. The amount of daddy slash mommy issues in this document are so big it feels like it came out of has been hotel. <laughs> mm. Okay, let us continue. He would go to Japan and tell me about his adventures while there. He would lie about random details, not for his safety, just for whatever reason. Like if he was drinking, who he was with, where he was, etc which I would find the truth about later on while listening to other library streams. Again, it wasn't about safety, as he would Snapchat me pictures slash videos and send me pictures on Discord of him with other libraries and where they were in the moment. I do not know if the other libraries knew about him sending me IRL, IRL pictures of them. Of course they didn't, and they're, they're going to be sending it to their, to their girlfriends too. I didn't know if what was going on would make him upset or not. I was the epitome. It was, it was the epitome of toxicity. I was going to therapy and trying different medications to try and feel more normal. She's a pill popper. As I felt like I was the reason he was doing this and I needed to change. I felt like I was the problem, and it was all my fault he felt this way. His behaviour would isolate me from friends, old and new. This drove me to be codependent on him. This feels like she is obsessed. Yeah. Don't make him talk about his hog pranking habits. Goes to Japan, does not limit, because does not collect the limit distribution Fender guitars I'm autistically accept, obsessed about. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this strikes me as somebody who has no sense of introspection whatsoever. That she has spent this entire document writing about this toxic codependent relationship. And it was a toxic codependent relationship right from the start. But it's only now, when things are genuinely going south, and she is losing control over Luca, that she is going, oh, I was toxic, I was codependent, etc. Not realising that pretty much everything that she has done up to this point is toxic. This is not the point where the relationship goes bad. This was a bad relationship from, day, from minute one of day one. But it's only now that she's no longer getting kicks out of it. Mika spent multiple livers her colonoscopy images. <laughs> OFC, they send IRL photos, photographs to friends. Yep. <laughs> My cat that I had had for three years would die unexpectedly one night. I messaged him for support in which he ignored me to play Minecraft with his new friends and again played victim saying he lost sleep over my cat dying. <laughs> Next thing I know how much Buffy meant to you. Are you kidding me? Even even me, I have never met them. Touched them. I couldn't sleep when you took... This, this is incoherent. 
Again, I did try to be here for the past few days. I'm not trying to neglect anything. Oh, I, I've heard of this before. Luca and I got matching phone cases. Luca would then go on to accidentally reveal the matching phone case during a hand can stream. After he messaged me in a panic saying I need to never mention the phone case if I would have any VODs mentioning it to delete them. Sleep well. Yeah, the cookies turned out okay. I am still trying to look for the freaking receipt. Sorry that I lost it. I kind of messed up on stream today and showed my phone case accidentally. Let me scroll down. Before, I think they will know soon. Either know, Lexi, you might have to hide the VOD where you talked about it. A week later, Ren would reveal in a hand, hand cam stream that he had a, ma a matching case. Ren and Luca having matching for got so bad. This is a very weird thing, okay? A very weird thing. Trauma dumps in his DMs. Oh. She got cupped, cucked by shoe. I can't even. <laughs> the moment when an Indonesian autist lets him see her insides before you. He's fluent in Tagalog and Twitch speak. English is probably his third language. How weird that she is not showing the messages that she sent. Yeah, exactly, Nihan. Also, how is she spinning this to not be sexual or them to not be dating if they are getting matching phone cases? That is a very good point, Luminous. Yeah, the whole matching phone cases nonsense, it really does sound as if they were still... Again, I still believe at this point they were doing ERP. This, this just confirms to me they were doing ERP. There is no reason for them to be acting this intimate and lovey-dovey together if they weren't doing ERP. And he says, message me in a panic. The thing is, this does not read as panicked messaging. I kind of messed up on stream today and showed my phone case accidentally, so be careful when talking about yours. I think they may know soon. I don't know, Lexi, you might have to hide the VOD where you talked about it. This doesn't strike me as a panic. This strikes me as something that is a legitimate concern. And he seems to be saying, hey, FYI, you should probably do something about this. Just be careful. This doesn't strike me as a panic. If he'd sent like 10 messages in a row saying, OMG, 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 delete your, delete your VOD, delete your VOD, delete your VOD. The Fujoshis are coming for us. The Fujoshis are coming for us. We're all going to die. We're going to get stabbed to death in an alleyway. That would be panic. This is, again, a malicious reframing, in my opinion. <laughs> and then... Ren Zotto had the other matching case. I begged him to just never bring up the phone case again. Let it die. Don't talk about it. Don't tweet nothing. Let it go as I was in a very fragile state and still scared of his fans and potential harassment. The fans and potential harassment you have posted zero receipts of. A week or two later, Ren would reveal on a hand can stream that he had the matching case. And she frame she says that this is like a cover story. But that makes no sense to me. I think that... I think that this is Luca having having a joke. I don't think that this is Luca panicking at all. I think this is Luca going, yeah, I'm going to play this off as a joke. This strikes, and that stri strikes me as, it's not panic, but he did go out of his way to get Ren to play along, so it's just very weird. Ren Zotto is involved, I think, in a poly relationship. He did what Vox should have done with his dryers pants. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that Luca didn't take this too seriously and maybe got Luca, got uh, uh, Ren on it just for the lulls, basically. <laughs> Mika and Mafu also had issues with a dead pet as well. I mean, didn't Mafu say that she killed his cat or something? It got so bad that while starting a new, new medication, I felt something was off. I decided to fly out to my dad's house so that he could keep an eye on me. This is when I would think about seriously committing suicide. I was at least coherent enough to realize I was forming a plan in my head to kill myself, and that's when I would rush to my dad to tell him who, who talked me through, and then kept an eye on it for a bit while I talked to my psychologist. I mean, that's just basic pity baiting. Uh, maybe she was, she was suicidal or not, I don't know. I can believe that she was menhera enough to be to be suicidal over an ERP VR chat relationship. <laughs> I return home, Luca and I would still be friends, and the toxicity and codependency would continue. 
He'd get upset at his stream content and what he was doing. He would use me as an excuse not to stream and then blame me for why he wasn't streaming. This ball to a point where he would lie to me about a drinking stream. I asked him if he really wanted to do it because he would tell me after every single drinking stream that he would never do it again because he was ashamed of what he said and did on those streams. He said he was going to do it but not drink. Then as it got closer, he would get he would drink a little. So the day of, he would say that he was going out to get booze until we could get drunk, but he promised he would only stream for two hours, then we could hang out. This is, uh, is there any, I have really made, have I really made that bad of lies recently? I get it, I gave expectations that I couldn't fulfill, but that's exactly the problem with me. Sometimes I just get carried away and forget. Also, unless it's a custom phone case, it's a mass manufactured item, why would you be that worried? Yeah, that's another good point, Guildmage Troy. She, she seems, I think that she, she feels she has thrown too much water on this, basically. <laughs> He would get drunk on stream and then stream for four plus hours. I asked after why he would lie to me about drinking in the length of the stream and he broke down on me. I was scared for his life because of the way he was acting. He completely shut down. He would only scream and kept repeating that he couldn't do it anymore and that he never wanted to talk to me again. We talked about this and more or less he repeated it was too much. I was too much for him that he couldn't live up to my expectations and I was too stressful for him to be around. He is stepping out of her control so she is going mad. Yeah, precisely. Like this all strikes as her being very upset and very menhera that she that he was slipping out of her control. And I can believe that he is a weak man with very serious mommy issues. And again, look at look at Dr. Freud up in the corner of my screen here. She treats him like a child. She mothers him constantly. She does things for him. She allows him to indulge in his learned helplessness behavior. She enables him. She is a surrogate mother for him. There's, you can't get, you can't get around that. And now, when he is acting more like an adult, and an adult in the sense that he is making bad decisions, messing up his life, and drinking a lot, which is a very adult thing to do, I'm afraid, in current year, she gets mad at him, and she acts like his mother again. Except this time, instead of being the emotional supportive mother, she's the toxic codependent mother. And that's why he breaks down. And I can believe him when he says that she was too stressful to be around. Can you? Because look, she he provides, she provides. Notice that as things get more toxic, she provides fewer and fewer receipts. And her receipts are all of his comments, not hers. She's not saying what he's, she is not revealing what she was saying to him at all this point. She, she says that she was toxic and codependent. But notice, she doesn't actually provide any proof that she was toxic or codependent, and I'm betting you that she is not doing that because she said some horrible things to him. The whole lying and pro promising he won't do something because she hates it and then doing it anyways is textbook C CWC and chibi cycles. What do you mean by chibi cycles? Like, I know CWC, but chibi? I don't know who you're talking about. When some MFs are like, Freud is debunked pseudoscience, show them this. So this is pretty much E.N. Mafu Mike drama with a weak man and all the men hair pairing. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Very good point. When he beat me in the control room, I'll have just have a look. Can confirm Java and Raz used to be on Rufflegator's lobbies and streams prior to Niji used to watch them. Yeah, thank you, Sparks and the Discord. Back to the dock. He would then, he would exchange diary-esque updates, we would exchange diary-esque updates to each other after this for a couple of months, but I noticed he was making me increasingly anxious. I was going through multiple cancer-removing surgeries. Has she ever talked about having cancer before in any context? Seriously. Now we're, this feels like she is just going, so she's in her, she's in her mid to late twenties. Chibi the stream, the speedrunner. Oh, I, I know that. I thought you were talking about Chibi Doki for a moment. <laughs> I, yeah, Jackie says, I thought you were talking, I'm sorry, I know Chibi the speedrunner, but I thought you were talking about Chibi Doki for a moment. Ah. <laughs> uh. He told me he still wanted to be friends in the future, just not now, and that we need to stop, sort things out first. We would stop contacting each other after that. Again, no receipts. He showed me pictures of his family's golden retriever puppy. Or is there receipts here? Uh, let me just scroll down here. No, there's no receipts of this the, the puppy and everything nonsense. Like she's 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 claiming multiple things, but she's not providing any evidence for it at all. 
Since then, he has only reached out to me to ask for information for his taxes. Please don't, f please don't fucking tell me she did his taxes too. Did she do his taxes? Did she do his taxes? Did she do his taxes? Are you joking? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry having cancer would be a huge deal and I'd be looking for all the support I could find from family, from friends and family. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my issue is not her talking about it. It's the fact she has never, as far as I know, this is the first time she has ever mentioned having cancer on any kind of document or social media thing ever. And so I'm just like, provide a little of irre irrelevant truth so you can get free to free reign to lie about the remaining 10%. I, yeah, that's a very good point, Luminous. I'm glad there are so many uh, understanders in this chat or notices who are familiar with this stuff and understand this rather than going, oh no, you're, you're being, you're being, you're victim blaming. To be charitably, maybe she's talking about mole removal. It's fairly routine if melanoma runs in the family. Okay, okay. He also deleted all of our most recent Discord DMs where he had taken credibility for how he treated me. That's so convenient. Oh, how convenient. This guy whose online presence has been detailed and documented in so many different forms conveniently deleted all the evidence that would let you that would let you get away with calling him all this stuff. This feels like the man-child redditor meme. This guy is pathetic. I agree. I mean, Luca comes across as pathetic in this. Completely pathetic. But at the same time, I can understand why he is pathetic. Oh, oh, I see. She didn't do his taxes, but he needed to... He, need the real, he, she, he needed a real invoice. Every single commission money that you worked on with me and what that I sent you because it is approximately... I need it for tax purposes. My taxes are already squared... Okay, this is a bitch move. This is a bitch move right here. A massive bitch move on her part. She is saying, look, look at this here. Hi, my taxes are already squared away and there is no benefit of me doing this. This will not be possible to do at this time. For future commissions, you should make sure you have proper invoices set up. Please do not contact me further regarding business matters as it causes severe emotional distress. Probably get some older Chinese Fujo mother instincts going, probably. But yeah, this is a massive bitch move on her part. Like, this is this is very much spurned X. This, this comes across, again, in the context of everything I've talked about before, this really comes across as, I can't control you any longer, therefore, I'm going to make sure that you get screwed over. And then with this document and everything, this is the real Raziel. This is the Menhera Raziel. This is the Raziel that I see. And this is, this is a nasty, vindictive person who has been spurned and is desperate to destroy the person who spurned her. So he can rat her to IRS now and get her in trouble too? That would be beautiful. That would be hilarious. These two getting into fights with the IRS. Oh, please. Please. <laughs> uh, Aster Arcadia harassing other co-workers. I can confirm that Luca said that multiple girls were coming to him about the issue since management wouldn't do anything and he discussed it with both Elira and I, again, Elira manager rat. I personally told him to gather as much evidence as possible and bring it to management since it shouldn't be be there. Luca and Elira's job to regulate this issue. To my understanding, nothing was done about it. Another eat another Nishi Sanji live were confirmed by D DM. The Aster allegations after this have been made public. After receiving a message, the message read, No receipt. And again, you could, couldn't even, like, a redacted screenshot. A lot of people waited for you to... Liver is dating each other. I uh, honestly... I am not even, I don't even care about this stuff because she doesn't provide any receipts to this stuff. All of this could very much, again, now, let me make it clear. I do believe that Aster is not a nice person, okay? 
that uh, like that stream that he did with Skarl right after that uh, those leaked DMs, which have never been disproven. As far as I'm concerned, those leaked DMs from like Discord are factual. They're ev they're proof. Uh, uh, people have uh, have looked at them. And they've been unable to disprove them. However, this comes across as without receipts and with all of the context previously. I cannot look at this and think that this is an objective retelling of events. I really can't. It's interesting gossip, but I am not going to think any less of Aster or anyone else on the Nijis. Again, I already think pretty badly of them, but I will not think think any any less of them from what Raziel says about them. Because again, she provides no receipts, and this is all this all feels like something that she could have typed up after reading the Gurat and everything, and be like, these are things that I can say that look bad, that are just that have just enough informed speculation about them. <clears throat> that people will take it seriously if I say, Oh yeah, these people are terrible. Skarl and Aster had never collabed with just the two of them before before those DMs, despite being in the same gen. Yeah, I, I do think that those did that those uh, DMs were genuine. The only men here are VTuber you should be tempted by is Shiori. Oh, I hate the Shiori friends. Uh, this liver is dating each other. There's no, there's no details, no details on this. It, it, it may, may as well be meaningless. No, no need, no details, no receipts. There's been slander thrown at me by organized hate groups. Organized hate groups. And there's a leftist buzzword, leftist phrase buzzword by any sense. I've been accused of being a pedophile and a groomer in regards to Java. I never knew Java before I was 18. This could be verified in a multitude of ways by people including early clips from Rolf Gator's stream. Yeah, the people who would stand to be branded as pedophiles are not going to go out and say, yeah, we let this 17-year-old boy into our sexual VR chat. Are you insane? That would be like saying, I am not a pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein can vouch for me. Like, that's the level of unreliable witness that we're at right now. <laughs> uh. Let me also say, pedophilia was forbidden in Rolfel Gator's streams. The group was big and close enough that any pedophilia or grooming would have been called out years ago. I don't believe you at all. These people have no reason to tell on each other. Absolutely no reason to tell on each other. This is a complete and total lie. Never, never believe these people when they say nonsense like this. You should laugh at these, th these kind of shielding attempts. This is pathetic. Thank you for your take on the final part of the document. Glad to see someone else agree that it has no receipts. Yeah, it has no receipts. No receipts. It, this is she. This really feels like her. Her providing of receipts at the start was so you wouldn't question why she didn't didn't supply receipts at the end. It's this whole oh she provided evidence at the start, so obviously she's acting in good faith. So we should totally believe her if then she is not able to provide receipts later on because you know she she so showed so much good intentions. Pedophilia was forbidden. Well, thank goodness for that. That's nonsense. It's absurd. I, I challenge. I challenge. Did who in Ruffle Gator streams was the guy in charge of verifying that people were above the age of consent? Who? When a big when when the group is big and close, especially one of influencers and streamers, it is quite the contrary. They would hide those cases. Exactly. It's just like people hide the disgusting things that Marina VT has done. It's why they hide the harassment and abuse that Silve Spark has conducted. It's why they ignore documents on insane managers and people like that. Because they know that if they admit that these things happened, they would be implicated. That people would go, Well, if you knew about it, why didn't you speak up sooner? Don't ever believe these people when they say, "Oh no, we would." This group was big and close, so they would never. They, 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 this would never happen. No. It being big and close means that it's more likely to happen, and they have more to lose if it comes out. Never believe these liars. I'm sorry, I kind of got passionate there for a second, but that's how seriously I take this. <clears throat> Thank you for the stream. I'm very, I'm very glad you had, you enjoyed the stream, Lecturer Amatus. Like, I hope people who have been maybe been around for the entire stream can understand why I was so angry and so 
miserable at the start of stream because uh, we started out with the VR chat stuff and now we got funny in the middle when it was just Raziel and so on talking about their insanity. But now we're back to the VR chat stuff and the, and the, the, the contamination of it. Just like in 420chan, one of the mods is documented in the homeland and had to DFE. Yep, yep. I mean, yeah, look at Kiwi Farms. Look at Kiwi Farms and how many times they've exposed pedophiles or child groomers or other disgusting individuals in high positions in various communities. You can never believe every time th these communities. Yeah, it's not a pleasant thing to think about. It isn't a pleasant thing to think about. I don't like thinking about it. Anyway, we are very nearly at the end and we are just about to... Good grief, we're nearly at the four hour mark. I'm amazed my voice has held out this long. <sighs> Summary. I want to thank anyone who made it this far to hear my story. I want to bring to light Luca's subtly problematic behaviour in hopes that my story can potentially help those who are stuck in a, in a situation that doesn't allow them to speak and let them know they are not alone. In regards to Lucas' behaviour, I believe his manipulation and abuse follows a straightly paid path of lying to guilt tripping to playing the victim. Yeah, so does yours, bitch. The lying phase often holds promises he will not keep. When he guilt trips, he may include bursts of anger and rage that leads to him blaming others for why he feels that way. This is what made me feel codependent on him. It took me a long time to get over thoughts like I should have just shut up and listened to him and then we would still be friends. He blamed himself. Ev I blamed myself for everything. It took months to realize that he clearly left me with, emotion with trauma from the emotional abuse he inflicted on me. And I don't want anyone else to get wrapped around his figure like I was. Again, I just don't believe this woman. Everything in this document points to a toxic codependent relationship where both people were irrationally obsessed with each other or that Luca briefly tried to break away from her and she went after him. Like she was the aggressor in almost all of these instances. I hope the small stories I have to share about any colors management helps paint a better picture of what some livers might be going through. Every job is tough. However, having the pressure and eyes these younger individuals have on them and zero support behind them must be emotionally to toiling. This is all just... Java and I shared a lot of fun and unforgettable memories together. That's why I'm... yeah. Java shared a lot of fun and unforgettable memories together. That's why I'm driving in the dagger into his chest and then twisting it very hard for good measure. We loved ERPing and streaming with each other. I wish this was a different time than when I could highlight all the joy we gave, the, all the joy and orgasms we gave each other instead. I feel sympathetic for all his fans, co and friends. No, you don't, you bitch. You're trying to burn all of them alive as hard as you can. I have no issues if you enjoy someone as an entertainer. Yes, you do. All I ask, like, this is this is just sickening PR bullshit nonsense. Yeah, at no point she actually looks like a victim. I agree. Sorry, I had to lean close to my thing. And we are done. Uh, maniacal foreigner, Kiwi Farms is organizing harassment ca campaigns. Kiwi Farms, this guy's a pedo. Here are screenshots of him admitting he's a pedo. This is where he lives. Keep your kids away from this person. Yes, we love ERPing. <laughs> It's the typical progressive, bad things are bad and should never be done outside extreme situations, but your words are literally killing people, so it's okay. This type of talk is always disgusting. Mm. <laughs> May a culpa, I shall sacrifice my force. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, let's just go back to, to just chatting. And again, I want you all to look at this locket. Keep, keep, your, keep your based Oshis close to you. Because there are people out there who will do really nasty things and then they will pretend to be your friend. And it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to have the emotional and physical maturity to watch out for this kind of person and to not let them get away from what they do. In my conclusion... It is exactly like I said on Twitter before I even fully read this document. These two people deserved each other. They absolutely deserved each other. Both of them are toxic. Both of them have terrible judgment. Both of them have no excuses for their behavior. Neither of them will lead happy, prosperous lives. They are both 
speaking of this, Spooder is celebrating 20k tonight. Like, to, is she live right now? Let me just look, because I'm gonna I'm gonna end stream soon. I just want to see if anyone is if anyone is live right now that it's worth. I I can't raid because again I don't have enough uh, have enough uh, view uh, uh, subscribers. Just look and see. No, it's it's a it's a pretty dead zone for streaming, unfortunately. So the only person who's streaming right now is Erina. So if you if you want to go and look at Erina, that's good. Uh later stream than usual. Yeah, I get you. But in conclusion, I I just thought I'm just really really exhausted by all of this. I really am tired out after this, and I don't want to be. I don't want to be. I want to have optimism. I want to have positivity. <laughs> oh, sorry. You know, actually, you know, actually, uh, Hills, Hills VT is streaming right now. She's on Twitch, so some free from three view V sing its fingers. I really like Hills. Hills is a very nice, comfy, comfy streamer. And she's she's the girl that had something like thirty nine thousand Canadian donated to her uh, a couple of months ago. I appreciate your words about introspection and bouncing ideas off of friends. Thank you very much, Proctor. I'm honored to be subscribed to you. Thank you very much, Proctor. I just got notified I will get my first pay paycheck in this video editing agency. Uh, good for you, I suppose. Godzilla is streaming soon. Okay, again, I can't I I cannot raid physically, but uh, let me go to my my stream thing. This is Hills VT. Now Hills VT is a very say so, very sweet, very nice uh, VTuber. So I would, if anybody would like to go and give her a bit of attention uh, as a palate cleanser after all of this misery and unpleasantness and horribleness and degeneracy, I highly recommend somebody like Hills. As for me, I am going to go have dinner now because it's yeah, it's just turn, it's just four hours, just turn four hours. Excellent. So I will let people uh, do what they want, and I'm very grateful for everybody who stuck with me. I'm extremely grateful for everybody who was talking about this, who helped me look for these receipts and all of this extra information and everything. And I'm going to see you all later. I'm going to see you all on Monday, possibly. I may not stream Monday, considering I stream today, but we'll see. Goodbye, Proctor. Pleasure to meet you. Good stream and good night. Enjoy food. Sorry for the tism. I'm just excited. That's okay. That's okay, Jackie. I understand. Thank you for the stream and enjoy your food. Oh, it's just kids, so yeah. And thank you, thank you, everybody. I I really do appreciate all of all of the attention this got. I really do appreciate all of you. And again, keep your Kami Oshis very close. Keep your Kami Oshis very close. And for now, farewell. Good night. Take care. I need coffee urgently. <laughs> Goodbye, goodbye, Sigma Yi. Farewell.